Hawes is a type of meat. Let's not discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Welcome to the Saladcast on... What the fuck is the date? <laughs> on Sunday, Sunday the 20th, is it? 2021st? 21st, I bet. Yeah, 21st. <laughs> of no, I bet it's the 21st. <laughs> 21st of October, 2012. I'm Robert Kemp. <laughs> I'm forgetting my name. <laughs> Okay, joining me today, Zachary Burgess. Woo. And then our second guest, no one. No one, it's just us. God damn it. <laughs> we, we tried. Yeah. Dan was in London or something. Or something. This weekend, not quite sure why. I think he went to a gig at some point. Or something. Or something. <laughs> you don't tell us nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he did it was podcast week as well. Yeah, I know. What, what, what kind of dedication is this? In fair <laughs> yeah, in fairness, you weren't the IPs at this point. <laughs> I wasn't, though. No. I'm the one who's dragging us into this. For once. And I tried to drag Kippers into it as well, but he wasn't having it. No, he was having pizza. Yeah, apparently. And apparently he has shit to do before work. It is like nine o'clock, half nine. Yeah, it's nine o'clock, exactly. It's like, it's going to be like late before. You're not like I fucking care anymore. I don't have to get up for work at the moment, really. If we do a regular late podcast, it's going to be 11. It's not late. <laughs> It's fine. Even if you did have regular work, that yeah, would be eleven's probably right. Yeah, probably <laughs> right. I, I, I got shit all sleep this week, though, right? Because like, because you were fine too much. <laughs> um, <laughs> not because I was farting too much. Thanks, Naomi. But the, um, <laughs> um, I basically on Friday night I fucked up Royal. We, 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 I was supposed to be in Cambridge to go for a curry, like with some of the um, some of the work guys. Yeah, and uh, so we did that. Went to the pub. We started, but. We went out to eat after quite a while of sat in, sat in the pub, and it's uh, and so we went for an Indian, which takes a little while as far as meals go anyway, because there's all kinds of faffing you do. <laughs> yeah, pop a dom stage, and you have the actual pop a dom stage, and then there's people ge- people generally have some kind of recovery stage, and yep. then there's the there's the what the fuck are we doing about money phase. And then there's the mint phase and the hot towel phase. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a lot of phases to it, didn't you? So, yeah, by the time we finished with all that shit, it was half twelve. <laughs> and I'm in Cambridge. <laughs> and it takes me, like, a good 20 minutes to walk to the car <laughs> and then an hour to drive back. So I was fucking tired. And then I got up at six. <laughs> Whoops. So I had, like, four hours sleep. And I was not that well <laughs> yesterday. So... I did sleep till 10 this morning, which, which was quite funny because I woke up this morning, wandered down the stairs, Naomi's there reading the iPad, and I'm like, you're up early. Because <laughs> <laughs> I had not known <laughs> what the time was. <laughs> Great skills. But like, you're up early, and it's like, I got up at nine. You're up at a reasonable time. <laughs> <laughs> so that was great. Sorry, Burgess. How's your, how's your week been? Your, your how's my weeks? sleeping been? Yeah. It's been pretty good. I don't think I've had any particularly unsleeping nights recently. No late night sessions? Well, no, 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 not any more than usual. Okay. Actually, it has... I think it's starting to drift again, which is getting annoying, where it's like, it's half three and I'm like, I'll just wait until four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so that's a dangerous hole to be in. Yeah. It's not a... But on the other hand, I, I like... Almost regardless of when I actually go to bed, I almost always wake up at almost exactly 12 o'clock. Like, yeah. to the second. I'll look at the clock and it's like, oh, it's 12.06 again. <laughs> I do that when I set my alarm. It's like, if I set my alarm for something, guaranteed I'll wake up five minutes before it goes off. Yeah, exactly. And you roll over and it's like, oh, fuck. Well, half an hour is the worst, where it's like, oh, it's half an hour before I set the alarm, but I can't really go to sleep again now. Yeah, that's the worst, because you're just sort of laying there, but then you're aware that the alarm's about to go off, yeah. so you don't really nap. And you're, like, waiting every minute, you're just trying to get slightly more rest. <laughs> yeah, well, I do that when the, when the alarm's not on, to be honest. It's like, I'll be lying there, and it's like, I'll look at the clock, and say, like, oh, fucking hell, five more minutes. And it's like, like just to get round it off to the hour mark, for some reason. <laughs> and then I'll sleep past that so, and it'll be like well, it's like it's now, it's now it's like 9.42 I'll just I'll just wait till 10 precision 
So yeah, I guess it's 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 dumb. So. But I sleep way too long anyway, which like is bad for my back. There'll, there'll be a point where it's like I don't really want to get up, but I don't have any choice because my back is complaining. <laughs> Trying to get up and sit in the chair instead of lying down. Oh really? Your your back doesn't like lying. Not for like more than nine hours. Your back <laughs> like, I normally sleep. Your back for. prefers the truth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who did you subscribe to the Brad Shoemaker doctrine of sleep that, you know, <laughs> sleep is for foos? Or the, uh, Vinca- Well, I certainly used to be on the sleep is for foos, foos yeah. plan. I mm-hmm. didn't sleep virtually at all. That was the university plan. Well, no, actually, I was on the, uh, I don't need to sleep at night <laughs> plan <laughs> at university. Yeah, yeah. Kind of sucks. That was what Wednesdays were for, where it was like, Wednesday, always, always, I, it was, I think, in, well, in Loughborough anyway, it was like the, the, basically they had it scheduled so practically everyone had a half day off on Wednesday. Hmm. No lectures for half the day, so it was like, ah, oh, that's the bonus sleep time. Well, yeah, I think we had that as well. <laughs> yeah. It was like Wednesday afternoons or something were just called off. That was when we used to do the, the Computer Game Society. Yeah, naturally. CG suck. It's a good time for it. Damn right it is. It's basically just a, a license to play Smash Brothers for four hours. <laughs> yep. On... On university premises. <laughs> yeah. On a projector. <laughs> Shit, yeah. And that inju- introduced lag. Not that we noticed. <laughs> you weren't playing that hardcore. I'm going that pro. There were some, no, some guys are really good at that. Like, better than us. Because <laughs> we are the standard. Well, we don't, yeah, we don't really play it to be hardcore, do we? We play it just for love. Well, with, even when we try and play it slightly more hardcore, we play it for love. Like, when we, when we were like, okay, let's go find destination with Fox, but they're just all shells. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there'll, be, there'll be some detail that'll fuck it right up. Like, <laughs> like an incredibly high spawning rate of nothing but green shells. <laughs> that was a funny map. <laughs> it's always funny, because it's just like, reflect, reflect, reflect. <laughs> just sit there, get the uh, get the old dime, the hexagonal shield out, and just like, pew, 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 pew. Yep. Uh, those are great Smash Bros still the only major compelling reason to get a Wii U in a year's time probably yeah oh, several years free. time uh, yeah are we going to talk about the Wii U then games no you mean news no probably that's not really news is it well, it's not really games I... <laughs> it's just general conjecture <laughs> conjecture <laughs> what what <laughs> I don't know if it is a conjecture really well, no, I suppose not. It's, it's like all the cards are on the table now. Yeah. Shitty cards that they are. <laughs> what was it? The, um, uh, Rabid Land. Yep. To add to Nintendo Land. Yep. Land games. It's meant to be universe, you idiots. Are we going to get, like, to say, yeah, well, do something with you, like, Rabbids U or University. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Rabbids University. The University of the Raven Rabbids. Yep. How to how like the English lessons must be interesting. All their language lessons, I guess. It's like right, what's next? Ah! <laughs> Basically, <laughs> ah! <laughs> that was I'd like noodles for you. <laughs> so, what else is in the news? Any other news? News. Well, I got this email from uh, Microsoft earlier in the week. That basically said, my gamer score is no longer worthless. Oh, yeah. It's like, because anyone that has over 25,000 points is now eligible for 2% rebates off all of their Xbox Live purchases. So, uh, for every 100 points, I get two back. <laughs> so, you can fuck up that number even worse than it already gets fucked up by having, like... Well, my, my point score is actually fairly... No, I don't mean your... My Microsoft point score is actually fairly... Uh, Fairly even. Yeah, at the moment. Yeah, it will get it will get wrong. There's always that, leftovers. So. Yeah, definitely. And now you'll just get leftovers in even smaller chunks. In, yeah, in little bits. <laughs> it's like they that, that last number I don't think was ever used. Like no, you know, everything was just multiplied by ten for some arbitrary reason. But now that now they cop themselves up. Yeah, those those digits will be useful. <laughs> Useless. Like nothing costs. Well, it's like apart from actually the avatar stuff, nothing costs so little that that rebates even ever going to matter. No, You'd have so to buy like like fifty games before you could afford one more game. <laughs> yeah, if you think about it, so you, you still have to spend four thousand points to have got two hundred back. <laughs> yeah. Wait, or is that is no. that right? I think you might be a ten off oh. there. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Math. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So it really is just a way to make you spend money on shitty advertising. 10,000 to 200, yeah, is it kind of, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's not much, but it's something, I guess, on top of the, like, monthly surveys, which are worth 20 points. It's just because they should give you a discount off, like, your yearly subscription. Yeah, that sounds wise. Yeah, that should just be a loyalty bonus rather than attached to gamer score, I suppose. Yeah, I guess. That's what the gamer score thing, I guess, they had, they would just, let's do something dumb for this. Like, Cause, it, because they, it's all going to get raised in, like, a year five. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I wonder if they will. Well, I don't know. I, I don't think they can raise the what you're talking about subscription. Or you mean the amount of points you could gain from games? No, like, I meant I meant the points on everyone's accounts. Because I mean, get raised? well, they they might do, but I mean, it depends whether how like how much of a ridiculous cut it's going to be to move on to the next version of Xbox Live. I mean, oh, presumably, I they're going to try and keep it more or less the same, but we would like it retain. Will they, will my, well, like, will they retain the score, or will they maybe, like, separate it off as, like, old score and new score? I reckon it'll be the same. Like, like the jump, well, they didn't have achievements before Xbox One, but, you know, like, this whole service was the same, and, like, how they moved when they tried to do games for Windows Live, it was just the same thing. They should definitely reset the scores. <laughs> no. Start everyone from zero again. Like, fuck no. And also give everyone a chance to not have stupid shit on their account any longer. Oh yeah, there should still be the option to remove whatever you want from it. <laughs> like, I'll sacrifice the four points I got for firing up Dead or Alive Extreme 2 <laughs> or something. That, that, that's a no-brainer. And all the shit that was zero points. Yeah, zero point achievements. Oh, fuck those. I didn't mean achievements, I meant games where you've started them and they just got locked into your list before they changed that. Yeah. Yeah, there, there was a... I'm not sure if you can even do that anymore. Do what I think they took that out at some point. The ability to delete games that you have nothing against. Right. Which is, I haven't seen it recently. I, I just seem to remember scrolling through the list and going, why can't I get rid of that? Yeah, well, I thought they changed it so that games didn't do that, but I didn't mm. remember that they let you delete them as well. There were some games that still do that stupid thing where they give you like a five-point achievement for booting the game well yeah so it's stuck on your but list as some arbitrary factor of advertising but they don't do that in demos do they no you can't do that in demos yeah so that's safe it has to be a full game yeah <laughs> they've never you've never been able to do that from demos no that was a sales point of buying a full game like it's like there's an achievement waiting for you <laughs> if you buy the game now which you probably wouldn't award you <laughs> <laughs> just fuck up that out ah uh... Check that out. What were we talking about? <laughs> oh, the Xbox deal thing. But yeah, if you have like over 10,000 points, then there's a slightly less what, but like good version of 1%. And as long as you've managed to score over 2,500 points, everyone is guaranteed to get something on your birthday month. Two points. Yeah, but yeah, it would be like two points or um, a copy of like a launch game or something that you could probably get for two like, points. Two points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that nobody really wants. Or a hat. It's bound to be a party hat for your avatar. Yeah. Something crap like that. It's like I looked back through it and it's like they, they always like said that oh, there'll be VIP rewards for people who who use this thing. And I looked back and I've had in the last few years that I've been on Xbox Rewards, I think I've had two. One of which was an Adidas <laughs> avatar item. Great. And the other was some other avatar item that had, was basically a t-shirt that said I love Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> Pro. It's like, great. Cheers for that. Much appreciated. Fairness, I've spent like no points this year, pretty much. You spent no points virtually ever, because you're so stingy about your points. Well, yeah. It's because I, I, I generally think a lot of Explar titles are a little bit pricey for what they are. Yeah. Especially now. They seem to have gone up a bit. And they don't do enough sales, you know, enough good sales. They don't sales do enough sales on Res. <laughs> yeah, well, they've never done a sale. <laughs> It's the only point. thing that matters. Res HD, yeah. Might be worth dropping for that at some point. <laughs> so you keep saying every time? Yep, every time. Every time when you say there's not a sale, that you go look at it and it's like, ah, oh, oh. maybe next time. Yeah. It's tough because I never like want to spend full price on something because every, there's generally something I want tends to come up on sale. Right. You know, like I didn't pay full price for Sonic 4 wisely yeah 
I think we didn't we know that that was a bit iffy before you purchased it. Well, the 1,200 Polish point that it is is dumb anyway. Yeah. Um, that doesn't work out. Whereas there are other games where it's like, I'd, I'd want to try, if you know what I mean. I'd, I know they have a demo mode, but I'd want to... The demos are always a bit... Or really disappointing, aren't they, on Explore or something? Like, two seconds long. Yeah. And they don't tell you anything. You don't get an appreciative thing. So it's like I'd quite like to... Like Mark of the Ninja or something. Oh, that set looks pretty cool. Or Dust and the Lysian Tail looks pretty damn sweet. Mm. But it's like, I'm not sure I really want to pay a tenner for them. I generally just don't buy games at full price anymore. No. It's like, it's a inefficient route. Plus I have no money at the moment, so you know. Inefficient. It makes it worse. It's inefficient use of my bucks. <laughs> It's more efficient to like my queens wait for several years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> does put us in trouble for GOT wise. <laughs> well, for goaties. Not that we were in any good position for those, even if we had played all the games. We need to play Mass Effect Three. Oh, God. We, 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 we were going to do a spoiler cast back in March. <laughs> we, just... we were. It never happened. No. And it'd be difficult to talk about some of the game of the year stuff without going spoilerific. I'm still not convinced that it can be a game of the year. Oh. But you know, I've got to actually fair to find that out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what opinion do you have, bitch? <laughs> but there's other good games, so, you know. Resident Evil 6. <laughs> oh yeah, a perfect example. <laughs> it's going down so well. <laughs> it fucking nights! So, what else news is there, man? We'll get to nights in a minute. <laughs> well, maybe. Um, what else news? Oh, I did read some more news, but it's gone. I had like some proper news and stuff. There's the FIFA 12, FIFA 13 thing on Wii. Yeah, but that's not surprising. And that, I'm sure I'd heard, heard that story like like a month ago or something. Yeah, it's been rattling around. Yeah. It's sort of just hit media prevalence at the moment. It is pretty shameless, though. <laughs> it's not, not exactly shameless, but it's just like, they charge full price for the game, though. Yeah, but it's just... They've changed nothing. Yeah, but they... The, I think the point is that they haven't... It's not that they haven't changed anything. It's because, like, it wasn't on the Wii before that. But they couldn't call it... They couldn't bring it out on the Wii and say it was FIFA 12, because then that wouldn't make any sense, because it would be like, but this is was, the old game. But FIFA 12 was on Wii, and FIFA 13 is also on Wii, and it's the same game at full price. <laughs> Yes, it's not just a roster update or anything. It's like it's another full price game that is just a roster update that they can't. How is that patch different it. from the other ones? Well, they say do, they often do something with the mechanics or something to make. They it often do, I guess. Like sometimes, not like Madden hasn't been like hell of the same for ever. Well, true, but they, I suppose the last couple of iterations introduced that Infinity Engine, which are now putting in everything. <laughs> yeah, but they can't put that on me. That is true. Evidently. Just don't make a, make a different game. At least make the menus different. Or, you know, don't just check and just colour of a sock here and there and make it, put different music on it. That's the laziest possible option you could do. Nope. At least if you're going to do that, like, <laughs> like sell it for, like, £20 max. Right. Because, you know, the people that then really, really want those roster updates will buy it, and it's a budget title, because that's exactly what it is. It's last year's game. Sort of. But... It doesn't matter, because... It really angers me. It's it's a it's a shitty thing to do. No one plays football on the Wii. It's supposed to be all right. Yeah. Because of the, like, you can... Because of the point and... The point, pointers act as interesting control mechanics, because you can just tell players to go places. Yeah, but... It's a stupid football game. Yeah, and also on the Wii, fucking football games, sports games in general. It's like yeah. no one. It's like Modern Warfare on the Wii. It's like who really cares? Even though it was apparently not that bad. Yeah, it's supposed to be surprisingly <laughs> good, is the phrase I hear. Yeah, but who really cares? That's true. <laughs> I don't care, and especially at this point. I don't care about anything that comes Keep out. The Wii U out for Christ's sake. Yeah, well they will do. In it's not going to help though, or is it? Well, we'll do for a bit. <laughs> well, then the, the Wii U will probably do quite well for a year. <laughs> and then we'll probably get another resurgence in sales once Smash Bros. comes out. 
<laughs> the only thing that matters. Exactly. It's got an enormous following and it's like, I've heard so many people now say that is the only reason I will buy a Wii U is when Smash Bros. come out. And it will still be the same price as it is there. Yeah. <laughs> 250 or, or 300 pounds you'll probably have to spend for it. Just not get it in white. <laughs> so, uh... Oh, I can't fucking remember. I had news. <laughs> you had news? There was more news, but... I ain't got it. It's gone. It's been, no, I can't remember anything. It's been stolen. It's not been, like, the busiest of months. News wise, <laughs> so, you know, stuff stuff's about to come out. <laughs> yeah, well, stuff has been coming out, but that's not news either, really. <laughs> no, news is other things that are happening. Singer's doing terribly. Oh yeah, I guess that was news, sort of. May uh... <laughs> the value of its business is actually decreasing the value of their raw assets somehow. I thought it was the other way around. No way. As the share prices are when you total them up, yeah. are less than the actual physical value of the things they own. Yeah. It's uh, like their, their offices and all that kind of stuff there, which is mental. It's like, how could that happen? <laughs> what, what exactly? We, I don't know. Like, you're not that experienced in the stock market. How often does that happen? I don't know. It's like, <laughs> we wouldn't know. It just seems like a bizarre concept, doesn't it, really, in general, that the, you know, the actual... Not really, it's like, it's basically a sort of uh, say, the same as like saying going out of business, where it's like you have to sell your assets cheaper than their actual value. I suppose. Just to get them away. Liquidate. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically what that's saying. Perhaps. Or maybe. But why are they doing so badly, is my, is my theory. Are people not playing Farmville anymore? <laughs> Probably not. But they own like Words with Friends and. Even though I'm playing that anymore. I'm playing that. Yeah, exactly. I still play that. With how many people? One. Yeah. But how many did you used to play with? Like three. Yeah, so at least 66% decline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess. Well, there's no reason not to. It's still good. Yeah. It's still free. Probably the problem. Well, that is why they're not making any money. Because you're only playing ad, the free. It's ad revenue, isn't it? It's terrible, <laughs> shitty ad revenue. Well, they usually get it on volume, is the thing. There's so many people play Zynga stuff. It's like I still occasionally play Scramble on my iPhone, which is a Zynga property. There's like Hanging with Friends, and all the With Friends games are now Zynga owned. Yeah. Gems with Friends, whatever the fuck that is. Yeah. <laughs> They're not involved in Draw Something, are they? Zynga don't have that. Someone bought Draw Something, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. It's one think, of those companies. Don't think it was. it Pop? No, it's not Popcat. No. Might have been Zynga. But basically, they bought it and then no one cared about it any longer. Yeah. They were like, we'll, we'll go and play the free version, <laughs> the some- other new version. Yeah, Draw Something was such a fad, wasn't it? It went out so quick. <coughs> well, the people who still play it play it online on the stupid free versions. What, on PC? Yeah. Uh, I didn't realise there was one. Well, that's sort of where it started, sort of. And obviously tablets just make that sort of drawing. I guess. But surely that surely that means it plays better on something like iPad or something rather than... No. Not many PC users have a proper I don't know. tab. Quite a lot of them do. And let's be honest, I don't Not the think... kind of numbers that Zynga would want. Well, no, but I don't think drawing things with a finger is actually really any easier than drawing things with a mouse, really. It's about the... It's sl- quite a lot. <laughs> you're, you're basically trading in, like, ease for precision. Or yeah, no, I'd prefer to do it with my finger on an iPad, really, than use a mouse. But that's the whole, that's sort of the whole point of that, of why the people who are still playing it might be the ones with tablets and stuff. I guess because so. they're, it's like they're the people who actually care about drawing rather than the people who turned up for a day and were like, let's play this stupid game. And then they like draw a stupid figure painting and then they were done. Because they didn't care anymore. So that's kind of the, kind of the fun of it. Because some of those can be so shit. <laughs> Well, you have to have moderately shit. Uh, uh, yeah, they have to be good enough to be able to tell what the intention was and then realise that the intention was a complete misread of what the actual thing said. <laughs> well, what made me laugh when I was put for the brief period I was playing that game before I got bored of it, it was um, that sometimes I could draw an incredibly super shit picture. For instance, you know, drawing a horse. <laughs> right, yeah. It's fucking difficult. 
I'm going to draw the worst horse in the world in the world because it was something to do with like the saddle or something. It would be would be the word. Right. So I draw the like the thing and, the and horse, point, at, point at the saddle. Point at the saddle. <laughs> yeah, with a big arrow. I don't know if that's really cheating or not, like giant arrows, but it's. It's no. But yeah, and you'd, you'd just do that, and then it would, and somehow someone would know what you were doing. Like even if your ha- horse ended up looking a bit like a cow, and the saddle could have just been a spot on a Frisian. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking drawing horses there. <laughs> it's so difficult. It is. They never look right. The head always looks roughly right, but then how the head sits on the body always looks wrong, and then the legs always look wrong in proportion to the body. Like, a horse is hard. Well, horse legs are kind of weird. Mm. They always have backwards knees and shit. Well, not yeah. actually backwards knees. Oh, they have proper knees, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> now try and imagine a horse. <laughs> Fucking difficult. <laughs> right. totally. That might be part of my problem. Yeah. Horses. Remember the last time you saw a horse? <laughs> this week, actually. Holy shit. For real, I had a um, a meeting for work, but we we because we're Son's office at the moment. We did it at Newmarket. <laughs> the race course. <laughs> the best place for a meeting. Yeah. And they had like horses just. Riding around. <laughs> As you would expect. Wild horses. <laughs> so yeah, horses. Yep. In the news. I heard there was a, um, a PC version of Scribblenauts coming. Well, they they announced that at the same time as the Wii U one. Oh, did they? I, don't, I didn't, don't remember that. Yeah. Even yeah, so, that's kind of cool. Yeah, and basically removes another reason to have the Wii U. And yeah. all to buy a 3DS. Is it the same game then, or is it like, or is it, or is it like the the remixed version on iPad? No, I'm pretty sure it's the same game. Apart from they have just like last week or something announced that the Wii U version will include like Mario, Luigi, and Princess Peach and Zelda and Link, and it's like, well, yeah, <laughs> there's just people. <laughs> yeah, that, they'll just, they'll just stand around and look like Paper Mario when they. Yeah, you. exactly. They do pretty much look like that. So yeah, don't need to, and apparently the, the PC version is gonna have the Steam Workshop, so <laughs> someone will probably make Mario and Luigi and Peach in about two seconds. Oh man, that's gonna be bonkers. <laughs> Steam Workshop, Scribble Not, sounds like a terrible idea in a way. Yep. Shitting dick niffles. <laughs> well, they already have that, and they had, that's the whole thing about this new one where it's like combine items together or whatever, yeah. like dogs with wheels. Automat. So it's just gonna be like spores, just like connect some penis shaped objects to these dudes. It's <laughs> 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 basically what's gonna happen. This is gonna be so bad. It's gonna be like spore all over again. It's like how many explicit objects can we make and how quickly can we remove them? Yep. Uh, but presumably it won't actually be that bad in Steam because it, the Steam won't, it won't be like Spore where they were just like, we'll have it just automatically download shit into your game. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be like, no, you have to actually go into the Steam workshop and select these files. Yeah, you have to pick the things that you want. I don't know how that would work, even on Wii U. Like, presumably if someone else made it, then you don't really want to go and select, oh, I want this object and stuff. That sort of seems against the point of the game. You want to just type something yeah, in. Yeah, well, you name it. Like, you name the object so you can type that word and get it back. Mm. Yeah, if it, if it works in the sense that you'd want it to be seamless. So if you typed it in and it found something in its database with that name. Well, I guess, I mean, if they wanted to do it like that on Steam, you'd just have the workshop interface more built into the game and have it so that when you type, like, a random word, mm. it will try and search for it and say, like, this is what people have made that fits that word. Yeah. <laughs> Here is Jake. <laughs> He's got a penis. <laughs> <laughs> yep, totally. So yeah, buy that on Steam, clearly. Not even on 3DS. Boo earns. Boo earns. <laughs> Hurry up and make new Advance Wars. <coughs> yeah, they're busy on something else though, aren't they? They've just finished the sequel to Push Bow. So now they're free again. <laughs> Make advances. Yep. <laughs> God damn it. Everyone yeah. stopped liking Pushmo so much. I don't really care for Pushmo. Well, it's because it's on, like, 3DS wear, so you you don't. No. eShops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, apparently eShops quite strong now. Well, Or it relatively. may be. 
Through the SE shop, anyway, has some stuff. Yeah. Like push, right? Push me. <laughs> so you're yawning now, you sure it's not late? No, it's just. You're yawning. Yeah. yeah. Fucking yawning. Yep. Yeah. Traitor. No. Fucking yawning. Sleeps for fools. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe I, maybe I am more tired. It was a four o'clock night yesterday. Suddenly. <laughs> Suddenly. I don't even remember what I was doing. That's the way the worst. <laughs> that is quite bad. It's like, it's four o'clock in the morning, there must have been a reason I stayed up that <laughs> To continue watching a video or some shit. So anyway, games. I had a few late nights working on my chip step. <laughs> Really? Yeah, I get into a flow and it's like that one seems to be going okay for once. Like a bit of, a bit of... Yeah, but the, you haven't got to the difficult part where you have to make an ending. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. You're, well, you're, you're like, your three, ultimate I'm, doom of having to make endings for songs. It's already working out to be quite a long track because under its current composition it's like three and a half minutes. Yeah, but you always say that as well. Where mm. you're like, oh, I can't make a track that's under five minutes long or something. <laughs> That was what you've definitely had a longer period, but then like all your songs are that long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was like sometimes though it works. It works out better to be a short song, but this one like it's it only really has two major phases and is three and a half minutes long. And it's just because it transitions and it's it's a bit like more of a you know how they do like a drum and bass tracks or something. They have to have the ridiculous build up section. <laughs> yeah. It's really long. Except in my case, the build-up section is like a different song. <laughs> That's happened before as well. <laughs> yeah. Or the opposite, where the ending is a different song. Oh, well... It's not really a different song. I like to do something different on the ending, because it, like, sometimes it works better as a crescendo thing to just go into <laughs> yeah, a but... Use all the same instruments to do something in the same key, but a slightly different... <laughs> There's one specific example I was thinking of, though. What, my uh, Beatles remix? Because that goes into that no. sort of, like, break step. No. I was thinking more of a slight, a bit of a bunch it section <laughs> that you added <laughs> to the end of one song. Bunch it section that I added. I'm trying, oh, wait. That's, 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 no one knows what the fuck we're talking no. about. No. It's like... Rob's music. Yeah. Get it, if you can find it. If we, ever, we might refer to bunch it in the future, though, because that just refers to anything where we think bunch it, bunch it, bunch it, bunch it is a good idea. <laughs> we might refer to that in the future. Well, yeah, because it comes up every now and then. You just, you know, as, as we you know, probably as a, referred to it before. <laughs> yeah, as a, as a term, bunch it means music that goes bunch it, bunch it, bunch it, bunch it. Yeah. Like a stupid fast drum beat. A bit like poker, I guess. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> as our frequency level used to go it was always fun making bunch it levels out of the frequency tracks yeah <laughs> it's like what do we do I don't know just, what, just the drums, smash the buttons the drums are kind of hard to make what do we do? what's the simplest beat we could do dum chat dum chat <laughs> remember uh, yeah so, sorry our new section was kind of shitty I suppose this week but there probably was no use yeah probably not I don't remember anyway some people were doing 24 hour streams for charity like yesterday and today so there you go charity of some kind charity oh I think I made oh. I like, had a thought maybe I made some notes on my iPad about these oh my god you actually had notes pretty sure I didn't okay <laughs> I, I think I had the intention <laughs> to write down some notes great but didn't actually do it that's how organised I am yep word I don't need notes I just don't look at it so, so I don't, don't, don't have anything to forget I suppose the Microsoft Surface got a price is that a shit price? well do you, is, is is it, well fa- more importantly like what? more importantly like how are the features of it for the price? well the 32 gig Wi-Fi version of the Microsoft Surface which is the equivalent of my iPad essentially yeah but, but um, a Microsoft thing but a Microsoft thing instead of Apple <laughs> comes in at £100 cheaper than my iPad Right. It's still 400 quid. Right. So, I don't know if that's... I'm a bit sceptical about whether they've hit the right mark there, because Microsoft doesn't actually have the best of images at the moment. Well, what are they even planning on putting on there? I mean... Windows 8 software. <laughs> well, yeah, but... Like, you know, whatever they call that interface now. Is it immersive or something they've called it now? I don't know. I haven't heard they have come up with an eating. Windows Experience. Yeah. XP. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> XP. Bring that back. 
Windows EXP. <laughs> yeah, I forget whether it's well, wherever it is. The Metro apps. Fuck it. <laughs> Phone. It's uh, yeah, it'll be those basically because the the, the RT model is coming out this year. The Pro version will like the full on versions of Windows 8 laptop style machines won't come out till next year. Yeah. And be probably, presumably quite a bit more expensive. Like probably near a grand I reckon. Because mm-hmm. they're basically laptops but tiny. Yeah. Um, but this is the thing. They're 400 pounds and you ha- and the, but the, the little the cool keyboard cover things. Right. 70 pounds. Mm. That's quite a lot. Admittedly, Apple charged through the roof for their shitty cover things. So you want to, you know, want to know how much that plastic magnetic cover was for mine? Fifty quid. That wasn't that bad. <laughs> it, was 30, it was like thirty-five. That's still a lot for a shitty magnetic cover. Yeah. And it's, uh, I don't really have a choice though because that's the cool one. That's the one that actually works properly. Is like the, as that cover, you know, the magic cover or whatever. Yeah, the one that's actually designed to fit and stuff. Yeah. And then there's the. Um, was it the leather versions of the Apple covers are like 60, 70 bells? Well, that makes more sense because it's, it's leather. <laughs> yeah. And they come in various shades of brown. Yep, <laughs> of course. Naturally. Various, various <laughs> shades of cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, it's, it seems like they probably could have gone lower, I think, if they wanted to, because it's like they're on the upper end of that middle ground, if you know what I mean. It's like the they're pushing it a little bit because Android devices tend to be quite a lot cheaper than that yeah but they're often quite a lot shitter than that until the Nexus came about which is a pretty neat device and is super cheap and it's like I don't know 400 sounds a bit steep maybe but but you bought an iPad so you <laughs> yeah, what you do <laughs> yeah, I don't care I do, I do know someone who has a Nexus an iPad and has a pre-order on a Surface well he probably is just obsessed it's not like he needs it's a proper geek, yeah. Yeah. Saying that, I am thinking, and I may have mentioned this before, of like not going Apple on my next phone. Partly, yeah. b- partly because the contracts tend to be cheaper. Yeah. And partly because the new Lumia looks really cool. It's like Windows Phone actually is pretty neat. And I don't really buy many apps for my phones anymore because if I want like a game or something on a mobile device, I put it on my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So I'm still in on that ecosystem for that stuff, but like, yeah. like um, the phone may be more useful for actual productivity stuff. But this is the one thing yes. I think that the Surface will have going for it. I think it will be better at actually doing work. Cause, yeah, probably. Because the RT version is going to ship with a version of Office built in. Mm. Like, admittedly in the Metro style, so there'll be not quite full-on versions of Office, but you'll still be able to use your OneNote, for instance. OneNote is just the most useful thing I think I'd want from that. Because I have OneNote on my iPad, and the fact that the iPad is missing a tab key <laughs> is kind of makes that kind of shitty. <laughs> right. And there's a, there is a limit on how much you can use OneNote's syncing capabilities with your SkyDrive before you have to pay, and the amount you have to pay is a tenner, something like that, which seems a bit steep. Hmm. For for an app like that, but it's a, um, I have found some other possible solutions to that. Like there's a there's a program called Outline, but you know, annoyingly it doesn't sync to a OneNote in your SkyDrive. You have to put it up on a Dropbox or something as a file, and then it can sync to that Dropbox, which, well, kind of, which is less convenient. <laughs> That's always the stealth plan. It was like the kind of, it was like the old Gmail exploit where it's like, you're gonna give us a shit ton of space while we start using Gmail as a hard disk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like automatically emailing shit to ourselves. <laughs> it's kind of annoying because unless you go Android actually, there is no ideal solution for this stuff yet. Because it's like, if you go Android, it has proper support for the Google apps through, through its web, through its browser. Yeah. Um, and you can use you can gain access to Google Drive and all the Google apps properly through the browser on your computer so that's okay and because you get both Android phones and Android tablets all of all the bases are covered and everything works you know you have you, you can sync everything everywhere yeah in Android land on Apple you have a problem because if you want to get at your Google Docs the mobile versions for Safari are terrible <laughs> they don't work very well there's enough to view them but editing them is a royal pain in the ass. Hmm. um you can uh, you can still get it files on your Google Drive that you know if they're PDFs for instance they can read those fine like text files not a problem um, 
It's the same with if you want to use SkyDrive on the Apple devices. You, have, you fall into the same problems. The SkyDrive web apps don't work very well on Safari. Um, OneNote app isn't very useful unless you're reading. It's useful for reading things, but if you want to make structured notes, it's not so great. You have to basically just make a wall of text and format it later. <laughs> <laughs> um so I don't know if like a Windows ecosystem might fix that, you know, like a Surface tablet combined with a Windows 8 phone combined with Windows computers, then they may finally have an ecosystem that works. Well, yeah, I guess. They haven't really tried before, I suppose. I mean, you can do all that stuff on Apple, but it's a too simplistic version of it. Like, yeah. You don't, you don't, um, the, you know, you don't, there is no proper note taking thing on Apple. You get that, that note software, which is, as basic as you could possibly have a note-taking piece of kit, and that will sync. Yeah. But they, they haven't quite mastered that yet, Apple. No. And no one else wants to make it work on Apple properly, it seems. <laughs> Which is really annoying. So anyway, tangent. <laughs> tangent? <laughs> it was news, I suppose. Tech, yeah, sort of newsy. What have you been playing this week, then? Game! <laughs> There's lots of stuff, sort well, sort of. Lots of little bits of stuff. First of all, we'll say the thing that I can't talk about, which is Planet Side 2, I got into the Vita. But that's all closed Vita and NDA, so I can't talk about it. But I only played it for like 10 minutes, and then you turned up and we played Guild Wars instead. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give us a sound that describes those 10 minutes without telling us any information? Well... Just a sound. <laughs> I'm trying to think of an appropriate noise. A, a syllable. <laughs> I can think of like two noises. Alright. This sums up my first ten minutes of that side was ding! <laughs> okay, you heard it here first. So there you go. Flat side two. Ding. Woo. <laughs> it's a game, apparently, because I logged in. Okay. <laughs> a 3D world exists. It's a thing. <laughs> Flat side two, it's a thing. There we go. I actually didn't do anything in those 10 minutes. I'll tell you that much. Okay. It's like I logged in and then started looking at the menus and then you turned up. <laughs> so, so even if you wanted to, like, apart from the NDA. Yeah. Yeah, never gonna say. No. Good. Good to know. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. So let's talk about Guild Wars 2, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah what's, what's up in Guild Wars 2? What do you mean, what's up in Guild Wars 2? Is it, well, you know, we've been playing Guild Wars 2. I'm not really sure what to add to that, really, because it's still Guild Wars 2. Well, I haven't been playing it much, apart from when we've been playing it's it. It's still awesome. I suppose we did, we we did, did World vs. World. Versus World. World. Yeah. We had a taste of that. Because I've told, I, I said we should wait till 30, so we at least had a, all our skill slots filled for the Elite. Which is wise. But I think we should wait until 80. Well, yeah, obviously. Because then we, we can actually compete <laughs> and be useful. Well, we, we killed at least one guy, like, I, two on one. I got, like, two, I think, kills in total that actually got assigned to me. One, well, I doubt it. You probably got quite a lot, actually. Oh. No, it it looks like yeah. I only said two. <laughs> well, it's because it's like... I got a lot of experience for assists and stuff. Yeah. Like, I didn't get... I only got, like, two outright kills. Well, like, on, like final blow stuff. I it suppose. depends what you mean by kill, even because they do because well, like when they're down, you have to do the stupid finishing blow and all that shit. Yeah, or just hit them until they die. <laughs> yeah, which is the much safer option because ninety percent of the time, if you try and do the finishing move, they'll just like move out of the way. <laughs> because a lot of classes have stupid teleportation moves when they're down. Wait, finishing move? What? You can walk up to them and press like a, there's no context key or something. Yeah, it's the F button, like everything else. No, I didn't try that. You just walk up to them while they're on the floor and press F, and then you do a dramatic like, huh, and then you stab them with like a giant pole that comes out of the sky somehow. Sweet, <laughs> but no, that, that virtually never works because you can't do it to thieves because they can teleport. You can't do it to mesmers because they can teleport. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can do it to. I don't know if elementalists can teleport, but I think they might be able to. <laughs> So it's like 90% of the time when you're trying to do that song, it's just like, uh, <laughs> they just move out of the way. And even like, even your like engineer, you've got that stupid move where it causes a big explosion and knocks everyone over. So if someone's about to do that to you, you can just go, nope. Yeah. <laughs> but then someone else will just run up and do it again. <laughs> but never mind. You can piss off one guy. So it was interesting, at least. But I, I think, yeah, I, I think we need more levels. Well, we also had a bit of a play. We also ended up on a kind of a dumb situation. Our team seems kind of rubbish. Well, at that at that time, mm. on that on that area of, of the four, mm. we were on the, the I, well, I guess we were on our borderlands, which I thought would be safe because uh, it's like this is our borderlands. Mm. 
but our team didn't really have anything yeah, we anywhere. Were, so. we were pretty overrun. <laughs> we ended up in this enormous, like, two or three hour long t- tug of war style battle. <laughs> it was really between dumb. two forts. Because it's like. But as soon as anyone got anywhere near the other fort, it's like they just. In fairness, I think we were attacking more than we were defending. Yeah. Well, it's because our, our, the fort that we were defending has so many fucking siege weapons in it yeah. for some reason. I guess because they knew. But it's like, because we came on. And that fort was the big keep thing was still ours, mm. and, then, and then we like went down there and there was like a V point or whatever up in the rafters, yeah. and then it was like oh shit here comes the enemy blob and they came and they just like walked in and it was like what? But then once they actually took it, it was like why can we not get this back? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't seem like this would be that difficult. I mean they had more people than us, but even so, they weren't. Yeah, whenever they pushed forward, we just sort of like trounced them in a couple of seconds, and it was just quite useful if I didn't fancy taking the walk because I could just sit. I, know, I, I spent <laughs> ages as a corpse on the battlefield guiding Zach's siege weapon shots, like tr- your trebuchet shots yeah. into the middle of the battlefield, going left a bit, <laughs> left a bit. It's the death spike, man. Just watching them coming in, being oh, that was a good shot. But yeah, that kind of situation, like, where you get a little, there's always somewhere where it's gonna be like that, where there's just like a <laughs> face off and you just jiggle backwards and forwards. Or it's either that or it's, it's kind of funny watching it as it comes, because it just, it just happens in massive pushes, doesn't it? Yeah. Until you reach the defences. It's like, oh no, they're running this way. It's like, retreat. Yeah, because it's like, you, most of the time you know you can't win. Yeah. Before, so it's just like, you have a bit of a face off and then it's like, oh shit, they've got more people than us. <laughs> yeah, run away, run away. <laughs> Pull back to the wall. Yeah, and then you stand there, and then they try and make them push on the wall. It's like, no, we've managed to kill enough of them that they're going to back off again. Quick, push forwards. Yeah, my engineer grenade kit was pretty useful at just throwing shit at the wall. Yeah. And getting people on top of it, and just, it's a bit more difficult throwing stuff off of it, because the grenades just tend to explode on impact on sit in front of your face. Yeah, so it's, it's, like it's the, really awkward. You have to, like, stand right on the edge, and then you're super exposed. Yeah, and you get hurt pretty quick. That's why the mortar is kind of useful for that situation, but of course the mortar does, doesn't have virtually any range, so <laughs> you have to shoot things that are very close to the wall, but at least you can put it a bit further than that. That's so, yeah. true. But the problem is, as soon as yeah, people tend to get close to the wall, because that's where all the... Well, they do eventually once they get in. Once, once they, they go for the game. Or once yeah. they're trying to be stealthy and like, sitting right next to the wall and shooting up at it yeah. or picking off the siege weapons. So I was doing for a bit. <laughs> yeah. But then when you get caught like that... You're totally buggered. You're buggered, and no one can really rescue you there. No. Although there was that time where several people tried. And basically, <laughs> yeah, Rob's corpse became a death trap. <laughs> Whereas, like, he was just there, dead, and then, like, random dudes would try and res him and die, and then another dude would come and die. Okay. And then one of them would get back up, and then be like, okay, I got this, I'm gonna get him this time, and then die. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty funny. That was the honey part of death. It's like, I, didn't, I, I could have walked out and saved people a lot of trouble. <laughs> but it was hilarious. It was funnier just watching it. Yeah, if you don't get any, if it's like the trouble is, if you don't get one of those kind of direct face-offs, you just get the stupid, like running round in circles where it's like, mm. like battlefield, where it's like come to this point and then move on to the next point, and in the meantime, some enemies are coming caught the point behind you, and then you just go round in circles forever. Yeah. <laughs> They're a bit tenacious, aren't they? Some of those guys, like following us around and stuff. <laughs> Like you see a group of them from afar and say, oh god, there's a lot of them, run, run very fast. Well, you have to be, in, you have to sort of know the escape routes. Mm. It's kind of the trick. Or know when to jump the fuck off a cliff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the classic plan. Sacrifice myself. <laughs> so yeah, we did that, I guess, some of it. That was pretty fun. We do need better stats though. Yeah. The more stats we get, the, you know. Well, I won't say it will be that great because it'll always be the same situation of like numbers of people more, are the important. I need thing. a more powerful machine as well. <laughs> well, it, apparently it runs like shit. That it's might like, have been. I, a, I think that might have just been because we were attacking a place with that lightning storm. True, that didn't help. Yeah, and you know, there was the fact that it was all snowy and there was like snowflakes everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And even if I, when I lowered the game to like the lowest possible settings, it still ran like dirge. <laughs> it was it was pretty horrible. There's just so much going on. Oh, yeah. There was, like, a good couple hundred people, probably. Yeah, probably. In that in that little area. And it was struggling. And I was struggling to find anything to do, because <laughs> cause I remember my character that I was playing, he was a thief, and it's like, what, how do you even do anything? All I could do, well, my, like, my main 
the main thing that I worked out that I was actually good at was stopping people, well, stopping like lone people from running away because my shadow step skill cripples them and immobilizes them yeah. for a second. So I can just go ding, cripple, and then dins teleport straight back out. Mm. <laughs> so yes, you aided everyone else in killing people. Yeah, whenever there was one, like you get those singular guys who just break off in the middle of the mass and they just try and run through, mm. you can stop them. Although sometimes you can't stop them. <laughs> Because those guys are tough, <laughs> obviously, because they're the ones doing that ridiculous kind of thing. Mm. Spec for it, yeah. You do have to carry a different skill set as well, so like because how you have to tackle it is quite different from. <laughs> well, turrets in your case yeah. are not quite as effective. No, they just die way too quick. Yeah. Swap them out for something else. It's probably might be better to have a companion or something like as my elite skill, maybe for that. Well, the, I wonder how effective the power suit is. But. Well, the trouble with that is it probably takes quite a while to like get in. It's not an instant thing because it's like it's a deployed thing. Mm. It appears and then you have to get into it, pull it out of battle, and then walk it in. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't last that long. No. So like a minute or whatever. Someone else could get it. Yeah, they could. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't, know. For them. don't know quite how, how to win that yet. But yeah, we've got. Plenty of single player to do yet. Yeah. I don't know. We got to, like, getting in the order of whispers. Yeah. Doing some dumb shit there. It's pretty funny. And we haven't yet worked out exactly where it's going to send us. So it's pretty goofy, isn't it? Really. <laughs> yeah, the order of whispers is kind of dumb. It's like, it's what, so, like, the Priory or... Priory is slightly less dumb. So it's the... Do the storylines for the various... For the three... Orders... Are they, are they orders or are they well I guess that's what you call them yeah and for the three like, so are the storylines for the three orders roughly the same by that point in the game then as in presumably you've played the Priory well, a couple yeah. of times and like does that follow the same rough plot then or, is it, or, is, or do the race and class requirements factor into it a little more at that stage because it sounds like they that you know we're possibly out of the race based stuff to a degree yeah I think so once you've hit, once you've basically once you go to the Lion's Arch thing and you have that meeting between the five different dudes from the five different races mm. it's like no we're not going to get that together that's when you're like that's the end that's the end of your racial story basically and then you're just trying to get everyone together mm. so you lose the race start but the priory, like the orders one, is because it felt like uh, the the Asura storage wasn't really complete, you know, in a way, because like you didn't really come to a good conclusion, did it? Well, the thing that the thing is that like because I'd already played nearly to the end of the game in the human with well, I mean, obviously, I towards the end of the game you've like joined back up, so all the orders have joined back together mm. at the end, so you're kind of completing the the diamond, yeah, completing the diamond, so. Like that whole the whole Asura personal storyline bit related to the race is going on about that guy who discovers like the dragons are eating magic or whatever. Alright, yeah, yeah. And that like turns up right at the end of the game. <laughs> it's right. like past the bit where the diamond joins back up, so that is where you suddenly realise that that's actually relevant. Hmm. And I didn't I just thought that was something that someone had found out at some point. I didn't know that it was actually like the main part of the Asura storyline. It comes back. <laughs> Well, yeah, because it's, it's sort of gone away now, isn't it? Because it's like... Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoilers. Yeah, because the council kind of... You know, the council knows about this stuff, but it's hiding it from for some reason. And But you go and tell the orders, basically. Yeah, you go and tell the orders, and then they want to do something about it. But, yeah. But that's kind of now disappeared, isn't it? Because we're off on errands, almost. Learning the ropes. Yeah, I guess we haven't... We haven't really done... Because I think this is how it all goes with all three of the orders, at least from what I've seen in the prior, is the, like, basically the guy you... The person you team up with on your first mission or whatever is, like, an idiot. And they, they're they like, oh, but I don't want to go and do the important thing that we've been told to do. I want to go do this other thing that I feel like doing. <laughs> <laughs> so that whole first mission is, like, just a dozz around, almost. Although it's still relatively important in some ways. But then it's like, eventually you get back on task. It's like, now we're going to do something slightly more important than the impactful. <laughs> I don't think we've done that yet. So what we're doing is a waste of time. Well, we've like, just finished the waste of the time with it, haven't we? Because we had, 
we had to go and get that woman mm. and then we had to get her out of Lion's Arch and then it's like now go to the pro- now go the to the lady we now go to the order headquarters that's her actual name don't look at me like that though lady we spelled W-I lady we it was like <laughs> I think our next mission is go to the order headquarters isn't it yeah I think so so that's where we'll actually like meet the actual leader of the order and he'll be like what have you been doing you idiots <laughs> come over here and get back to work <laughs> yeah we did something I don't quite know why did we start doing that because it was just like meet up with this guy wasn't it and then he started telling us to do all this yeah well he's like the men- he's like the mentor and he's like I'm going to lead you to the orders base, but first I've got this thing I need to deal with. Only he didn't actually need to deal with that thing. He was just an idiot. Oh, is that <laughs> wanted... is, is well, that's, that why he, that's why he said, though, wasn't it? Like, he's actually a total noob, and yeah. he just felt like doing something interesting. <laughs> I'm not sure he said that. It, was <laughs> like, it sounded like it was his assignment, his first field mission, wasn't it? Or... Sort of, yeah, but so he didn't probably... have to drag you along, is basically what the, <laughs> what the result of that was. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> He should have just told you where to go. It's goofy. Yep. But it's... It's a kind of well-done kind of goofy, isn't it? Like, the not-self-serious form of it. I guess. It kind of felt like that was perhaps the problem with the first Guild Wars, isn't it? And that it... Its story just kind of fell flat. It's like, it has some, cool, like, neat ideas, I suppose, but the way it was presented was so... It was pretty shit. Well, there was a lot of... And it was all very, like... Yeah, as I say, all the characters were like kind of grand and were kind of like, we must stop this. Yeah, yeah. Rah, look at me with my sword. The, the, the trouble with Guild Wars 1 story is it was unnecessarily convoluted. Whereas, like, first of all, you're in Ascalon and you're dealing with the char, and it's like, okay, okay, shit, we haven't abandoned Ascalon, so let's get the fuck out of here. And then you just walk into Kryter and it's like, okay, White Mantle, what are we. We're going to join them, and then, oh shit, we actually need to fight them, yeah. and we fight them for ages, and we get through the jungle, and it's like, well, actually, that's not even relevant, because now we need to go to the desert, yeah. and now we have to ascend, and now we have to talk to this fucking dragon about things, and then the dragon tells us we have to go to the fire chain. <laughs> it's like, it's all totally, like, almost irrelevant to the actual end of the game, where it's like, okay, now you have to defeat the evil god dude or whatever. <laughs> There's, like, no real theme, is there? It's just a meandering thing. Yeah. Just, like getting hard, you from place to place. Yeah, it's hard to be invested in it. I think. Whereas the world, well, both the world is the world feels so much richer in two. Yeah, and much more coherent. Everything ties together far better. It's awesome. <laughs> Sum that up. It's, it's still awesome. So what else we got? What, how, how's your Borderlands <coughs> going? Is that calmed down, or are you still putting hours into it? No, we basically. I don't, we haven't played it again since we finished it, basically. You finished it? Yeah, we finished it and then did, like, a, a little tiny bit of the start of the second playthrough. Mm. I think I talked about that already. Yeah, I think, yeah. About how it was kind of, how, how it was ass, how it's like, I have all these awesome weapons, and now all the shit weapons are better than my awesome weapons, I have to use shit weapons again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boo. I have been playing quite a lot of Borderlands 2, regardless of that, because I was playing one of the other characters, classes... Not even the new one. I did play that for like a couple of minutes. What, Macromancer? Yeah. Oh, get, that actually came out. Yeah. To get to the point where I can use the action skin and see what it was. Mm. And people aren't kidding where they, when they say like it's the piss easy class for girlfriends. Because <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it's like... The, the, can you push the button and it wins for you? Basically. It's like yeah, the, uh, the Macromancer's action skill is like summons a floating robot torso that just beats the shit out of stuff <laughs> but not only does it beat the shit out of stuff it draws aggro quite a lot so yeah, it keeps stuff off you really well mm. and it lasts like for two minutes or something <laughs> so it lasts fucking forever and doesn't take that long to recharge does it get destroyed easily or... not that I've noticed mm. it hasn't seemed to have been taking that much hit point damage mm. so it's just like that's like easy mode and quite a lot of the actual skill tree skills are like more subtly than the giant robot thing but then then, like quite a lot of them are sort of subtly making it in the sort of easy mode as well where it's like it seems like the main sort of bonus stat bonus type stuff for the Necromancer is to, is basically more damage but less accuracy. So it's like you don't have to be as accurate but you still do more damage. Hmm. And then and particularly it was particularly obvious because there's one of the skills where it's like <laughs> any bullets that hit a wall near an enemy bounce to the enemy. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> 
<laughs> so it's like easy mode. Yeah, it does sound pretty ridiculous. Lazy mode, basically. <laughs> yeah. So I tried that for like five minutes and was like, yeah, this is kind of easy mode. Maybe that was to make people not worry about it too much being a pre-order bonus thing. Yeah, maybe. So let's just make a shit card. <laughs> but then I, the main thing I've been playing is I... The one... When I, in my main playthrough, I'm playing as the Siren. And the person I'm playing with is playing as the Assassin dude. But I wanted to try the Assassin dude because I wanted to see what it was like if you went down the melee tree. Oh, right, yeah. Which is kind of weird to even exist in Borderlands because it's like, it's a game all actually guns apart from there's this whole skill tree where it focuses almost entirely on your melee <laughs> skills. It's kind of annoying because they didn't... One of the things we sort of predicted, doesn't it, that perhaps they'd introduce a melee weapon system. Yeah. But they haven't, really. <laughs> you still get the guns with knives on them. Yeah. <laughs> and do they, massive uh, melee damage. I'm not sure that really counts. <laughs> But yeah, I've been playing that character and trying to get down the me- down the melee tree, and that's actually kind of fun. I haven't quite got to the bit because I wanted to get high enough level to get basically the last skill on the melee tree, which is it's also tied to an achievement, which is another reason to do it. <laughs> but the 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 last skill on that melee tree is like when you go into your cloak thing. Basically, that whole tree is like well. From the start, when you go into cloak, it's like the longer you stay in cloak, the more damage your next shot does. So you like cloak and then wait and then do your death shot. But then that also applies for melee. So that whole melee tree is like bonus melee damage and then like melee bonus melee damage from behind and <laughs> that sort of stuff. And like a dashing melee attack. Naturally. So you see, so you can do lots more interesting melee things. But then like the last skill of it is when you're cloaked and you kill someone with a melee attack it adds to your cloak timer and just recloaks you. So you can just chain and kill all the shitty enemies in the area, basically. So do you think it might work better as a character like when you're playing co-op then because of the potential lack of aggro? Or Maybe. I mean, it does work pretty well by yourself just because the... Well, the hologram draws all the aggro when you cloak. It's not mm. like the enemies just forget that they're fighting you wander off. <laughs> well, they, they can do that sometimes. But generally, like, when you project the hologram, they will start fighting that and then you can, like, position yourself and just murder them. <laughs> and it's pretty ludicrous. I don't... I've been... Because com- I haven't got the chain reaction skill yet, I've mainly been combining it with a shotgun. And it's actually ludicrously powerful where it's just, like, badass enemies you'll just, like, cloak wait until the last possible moment and do the death melee attack and that takes off like half the health and then you just go blam <laughs> so they just die with the shotgun so it's like ludicrously powerful for that split second although if you if you don't you know that period when your skill is recharging that's when you kind of suck a bit more hmm. you just have to like leg it around and try to avoid fire play it normally I suppose yeah so yeah that's pretty funny but I definitely want to try out that chain reaction skill and then get that stupid achievement for staying cloaked 10 seconds. <laughs> Alright then. Yeah. Is that that, last two? that character's like level 22 now. And my main character's like finished the game and it was about 37, I think. And I wanted to play some more on, with Kiffers, but his internet wasn't up to it. Who knows? Or at least like, his internet um, wasn't up to it when he was also streaming. Yeah, of course not. That's never going to work. <laughs> well, it worked the first time. And it actually seemed to be working all right for his Halo Reach as well. Yeah. It worked the first time it, we, when I joined his Borderlands on his stream, and it was mm. perfectly fine, apart from the initial connection problems that we had. Yeah. How How is that system now? Because it was a bit shitty before. I don't seem to have patched that as far as I can tell. Mm. I still had to put myself into the DM. Well, no, actually, last time when I did try and join Kimmer's it did join without me having to DMZ it. So, mm. I don't know. Excellent. And then I thought I was lagging because I hadn't DMZ'd it and it, turned it on. So, so is it still all GameSpy? No. It's their own system now. Okay. So, presumably the inviting and joining stuff isn't so awkward and... Yeah, it works pretty well. Okay. It's like all your... weird problems like sending invites and you don't know if the invite's <laughs> actually been sent. And, <laughs> and then, then sometimes it wasn't. And then sometimes it hadn't been and then you, you, you'd you click it and it's like, have you actually clicked to join me? And it's like, yeah. And it's like, you just wouldn't appear in my game. Yeah. It does seem to work a bit better now when it works. And like, or it just lists you like... In conclusion, fuck games by. <laughs> yeah. It lists like all your friends who are playing on the main menu so you can just click on them and join their game or whatever. That's pretty useful. Yeah. So did they use the Steam integration to do any of that? 
Like, mm. so you can actually just pull up your friends list in the, on the overlay. But you can do that with most games in Steam. It's just variable of how efficiently that works. It's like you do that in Team Fortress. If yeah, someone's yeah, in a course. game, you just hit join. and then Yeah, like, yeah that's, what, that's, why, that's what I mean. Because that was, in theory, the easiest thing to do on Steam, isn't it? <laughs> well, in theory, apart from the, like... It's, that's a risky proposal because it's like launch, having to launch a game and then like remember this thing that you did outside of the game. <laughs> yeah, but no, I mean, actually, once you're into the game, use the Steam overlay with the friends list no, and do join like you can in TF. Or... But since it's just on the front page of All Lands 2 anyway, you don't actually need to use the Steam one. <laughs> yeah, you might be right. Do you have to like sign into any service or something? Or is it just... uh, no, you don't have to. There is a service that you can sign into, but I don't think it's actually needed for okay. the, Unlike Torchlight 2, which is something else that I've been playing. All right. It's smooth. Torchlight 2. <laughs> there's another two. Yeah. Year of two. Because I hadn't played Torchlight 2 for, like, nearly a, two weeks or a month or something. I can't remember how long it's, it's been board, since I last talked about it. So Borderlands kind of screwed you out of it. No. It was just that I had other things I wanted to play, and I wasn't feeling so much into Torchlight 2. Yeah, that's cool, play. Well, yeah, that as well. But, uh, like, last night, I got into that with the same person I was playing Borderlands to, which is <laughs> going to be a problem for splitting our time up. Mm. But, because um, they've been playing it at work, uh, as, you know, because I guess it's a suitable... It's a pretty good work game. Suitable work time game. Yeah. Although somehow they, they, their main character had got further in the game than my had, oh. and they'd only been playing it at work. <laughs> I was like, okay. And so we just both, we both started new characters. How much work does he actually do at work? Apparently not very much. Okay. We both started new characters. It's a lifetime game, not, not work game. <laughs> no, I think it is actually a work game in their case. Oh, is he a journalist or something? No. Just uh, not a very busy job. Oh, okay. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're on IC most of the time, so... <laughs> Log into that and work as well. It's all whole kinds of shit. I'm like, who's here? But anyway... um, yeah, we both started a new character, and that actually seems to work pretty well in terms of like an online game. It didn't seem to have any problems mm. or noticeable lag or anything. Although you do have to sign up to a Runic Games specific account. Mm. Seems a little unnecessary given their embracing of Steam. But... Yeah, you would have thought so. But yeah, we played some of that and actually got quite far, quite fast. It seemed like things were, even though we were playing on the same difficulty that all, all our mains have been on, which is like veteran, basically. Mm. We played on that again, but everything seemed to go down. Rel- the, a lot of stuff seemed to do more damage, but with our combined damage output, we were just doing quite a lot of damage back. Was are you sort of like? Is it because your damage is more area effects, and it's like the the scaling sort of would make more sense on a one to one sort of basis, or? No, I don't think so. I think it was just something to do with... Well, maybe... Well, apparently apparently, they also got like a super lucky weapon drop quite early that did ludicrous damage. Yeah. That was probably helping somewhat. But I thought I was still doing quite a lot of damage with my skills. Because I was... I decided... My, my main character was a engineer. <laughs> Again? <laughs> Again. Like, well, uh, like not Warlands, Guild. even. Guild Wars 2. Guildlands. Yeah, Guildlands. So I made another engineer, but that was a, like the torchlight engineers. And the way I played it, I went for like a cannon, which is like a sort of medium range weapon. Basically, <laughs> it's not quite short range. It's not quite long range. Are we talking like a hand cannon, or is it like a, like a physical full on cannon? It's sort of like a you, cannonball cannon. It sort of looks sort of like how the heavy's minigun would be, it's oh, like right. a huge ass thing that you carry by your side that just shoots. Mm. It's, look, when it fires normally, it looks more like a shotgun yeah. blast, really. But but I do like one of the cannon skills you have is like a fires a more long range sort of bolt, so you can just, and sort of as is typical in 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 torchlight one and two, you almost don't use the basic attack of your weapon most of the time. <laughs> it's like as long as you've got the mana, you can just hold down the same the, that special cannon attack and just go bang bang bang, <laughs> just like you used to in torchlight one. So yeah, that's how I played Engineer, but then they played Engineer Melee, and I, my character that I was playing with them, I went to the Berserker, which is, has, I was trying, I was trying to spec it all for like, health basically, hmm. where the, what the skills that I 
was going for you have like you have this dash move where you steal health as you dash through enemies but it only hits you only steal health from like two enemies out of however many you hit but it's also quite useful because you can go through enemies so it's like good for manoeuvring so you don't get jammed in (laughs) so I took that but then I was also mainly specking on the passive skills that where it's like Every year, all of the classes in Torchlight 2 have like a charge bar that charges up when you're, as you do combat, and then it does special things depending on what class you are. But the Berserker one, like when it gets full, you just get 100% crits. Right. So you just, there's like hella damage output for a few seconds. So I was doing all the passive stuff where it's like, now I can, now my charge lasts longer, and then it's like, now whenever I critical hit, I gain health. So basically, as soon as I hit charge, I basically become invulnerable because I'm getting health every time I'm hitting things. Thank you, <laughs> So yeah, that was my plan with that. The all-out critical hits. And then it was like, now I've got a thing where also when I critical hit, it damages other enemies next to the enemy that I'm actually hitting. <laughs> Explosive critics. Yeah. So I, that's what I was trying to do, and it seems to be working pretty good. But there's still quite a few things that were just one-shotting us occasionally, where it's like, oh shit, I... Because, I mean, it's sort of the same between... It's sort of similar to like how Borderlands 2 is as well where it actually sort of makes you move and Guild Wars too it's like they've developed the technique of actually trying to make you move around in combat oh, right. you can't just stand there and take it you yeah. actually have to look at the enemy and be like oh shit he's trying to come for the attack you move out of the way <laughs> it always was a little but it controlled a little less like the, the you know left click to move here and right click to shoot kind of okay. it had it had WAS and D controls before didn't it or? it did but when did you ever use those <laughs> I don't, I can't it doesn't have them any longer it's been too long think. since I played it I think I can't really remember. Maybe it didn't. I, I know. I was wondering, really like, in that traditional control scheme, a bit tricky though. Well, you had to always use the the shift thing to stop you, especially if you're using ranged weapons. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot about that. To sort of plant yourself, yeah, so you can aim properly without moving all over the shot. But the trouble is that the trouble is you also. I'm starting to think because there is a way to do. I think there's a way to do it in Torchlight 2's control scheme, but I can't remember what. But you'd have to set another button. But you didn't. You, it's like you need another button for don't attack things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just move. A stop button. Mm. Well, no, not stop. Like, like let me tell you to go somewhere without accidentally clicking on an enemy and then they're having you shoot that rather than run the fuck out of the way. Uh, a force move. <laughs> yeah, basically. a bit like um, yeah, the old C and C force move. Yeah, hold alt. I think there is actually a button to do that, but then that'd be. Just, it's like, that'd be another fucking button you'd have to be trying to push as well as the stop move button mm. and the display loot names button or whatever. I've just been playing with loot names turned on now, which can be a bit dodgy. Or oh, like, just a display when anything's dropped. Yeah. Yeah, I think I did that in the first game. Well, in the first game, I always had it off, and then but I just had a button to show it, so I just hit that all the time. Mm. I'd have, like, shift and alt and just hit them after every battle. Yeah, I think I gave up on that after I found it annoying, just, like, leave it turned on. I don't know why I don't like it like that in Torchlight 2, but I've just had it turned on now, and mm. it's okay most of the time, but the trouble is that, like, the bigger enemies and the better chess just got a shit ton of stuff, and so you just get, like, a whole screen's worth of text, and you go, boing! And you can't see <laughs> It's like, oh. That's why you try not to open chess until you finish with the combat. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. It does... It's, I don't know quite what I feel about Torchlight 2, because from what I've seen, it's like it's... sort of the same, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but... It's like, are they, are they like, outside area? Are they moved away from the randomly generated stuff? It seems like it. It's not, I think it's I, like planned areas and. I mean, I think the like dungeon areas, like the in the bits that are inside, are like still that randomly generated thing, but not mm. very random. It seems like the blocks are bigger. Okay. That can be fitted together, but there doesn't seem to be as much of that any longer. Mm. It's like when you do go into one of these dungeons, it's normally like two floors, and then you're done. Mm. Rather than the five floor, <laughs> or rather than System. the infinite floors. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you spend a lot more time in the outside, and well, I'm ha- I can't, I haven't managed to determine whether the outsides are randomly generated or not. But they're definitely different between like my different characters. It's like they're not always exactly the same map, but I'm not sure whether it's actually random or whether it's a different map. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. So if they like, they've got several map designs planned out, and which one you get is yeah. I haven't quite managed to tell. Or is it like as you say, like an even bigger? 
tiled version, so certain elements may be the same, but elsewhere... Yeah, it could be. It's not very easy to tell, though, Mm. because it's quite open. Yeah, it it looked more open, like just big expanses of nothing from some of the videos I've seen, like, well, bigger expanses of nothing, because it was fairly corridorized, wasn't it, in, in the first one? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. It's like, a bit of me is kind of intrigued because I did kind of like the first game, but it's... I'm not sure I've seen enough new. <laughs> well, yeah. You know what I mean? To really draw me into this one. Apart from the fact that there's more pets. Yep. Bulldog. Yeah, freaking bulldog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also not sure I like the idea that my character has gone evil. <laughs> yeah. So it's my guy. I didn't even realise that that was that guy for quite a while. The and alchemist. I was like, oh wait, the alchemist, I get it now. It's the alchemist. <laughs> yeah, it's literally the alchemist. Yeah, the only one. Not the, you know, I don't know. The whole thing didn't make any sense. No. It was just like, we went in there and we fought that dude and then we decided not to just leave. <laughs> They hung around in Torchlight, and then it's like, oh shit, we've accidentally become evil. Yeah. Or that one guy has. It's like, all, the, all this exposure to Ember. Oh yeah, I remember now. All that stuff that I was reading about it fucking you up. <laughs> yeah. Turns out it's fucked up. <laughs> Whoops. Well, they're uh... weirdly... It's like, there's still the Ember Mage class in Torchlight too. It's like, they haven't learned their lesson. That'll be the boss in the next game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the continuing thing. Are the other two characters in it then? Uh, yeah. Like the thief and the... Yeah. The beard man. Yeah. They basically, in the intro sequence, they fight yeah. the alchemist and then they're like, oh shit, we can't win, we better retreat. And then we find this other random adventurer dude and get him to do it. And then there's a mysterious third party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that joke in Pity Arcade. Like, yeah. Remember when we used to fight with this mysterious third party? <laughs> I still need to play that. I still need to finish Cthulhu Sex yes, Alive. apparently. I haven't played that in a while. It was all right, but you know I haven't really done it since I've been working from home. But no, but uh, so he talks right to you. Yeah, I'm watching too much X Factor at lunch. <laughs> Watched all the auditions now. Oh, good. Like, no, they didn't really do an episode of like as much as that. The trailers at the end of each episode kind of made it look like they never really did the uh, everyone's crap episode. Yeah, the everyone crap. It's it's not as it sounded like. There's Gary Barlow's influence or something. Like, he didn't want it to be so much of a joke anymore. Right. So, has, uh, the, the show's so taken on, the show, yeah, the show's taken on a more serious, <laughs> well, I say a more serious stance. It's like, if you've seen anything to do with that Ryland character or something, he's, he's the new Jedward. Yeah. On his own. Two for one. Yeah. <laughs> or one for two. But anyway. Traded. <laughs> anyway, enough talking about X Factor. Also, seems like the people they've brought in, like to the live shows, because I watched the live show like yesterday. Yeah, so the other people they've brought in, not the best ones that were in the auditions. It seems <laughs> they've picked a weird bunch. They were just like screw you guys, are they? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> it's weird. It's kind of underwhelming. It's like there were some seriously good people. But they're not all there. Anyway, I don't know why I care. No. I still don't know why I really like it. It's no. Fun. It's better than Strictly. That's true. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what? dancing. I mean, what's the heck? What's good about that? <laughs> can't hear dancing. Well, this is tap dance. It's hard to make a tap that sounds out of, t- out of key. <laughs> the tap doesn't really have a key. It's not a key though, it's timing. Tap, t- t- oh, that could that could be quite entertaining. If they're really loud tappers, but with like tapping some other tune. <laughs> yep. Rhythm. So anyway, I can't remember if I was going to say something else about to watch right too. I felt like I was going to. So what, how do you feel about it? You've talked about like mechanically and stuff like that, but you know, compare it to the first game. Is it is it really worth it? Because it's like I, I'm not convinced. If you know what I mean, as I say, like people who want more torchlight, yeah, no brainer, it's torchlight. I guess, but you're going to like it. But I'm still well. I don't... Oh, yeah, I'm not sure. You know, if I want a game that's the same, 
Well, yeah, but you didn't really play Torchlight 1 that much. I mean, you did. I and that finished the story, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that wasn't exactly a long story. You read it at least. It like 20 hours. <laughs> yeah, didn't you like 20 hours, though? So. <laughs> and also, you weren't playing it seriously. You were like, that was your work. That was my love time, yeah. Though. Yeah. So it was bitty. And I think that probably makes it longer. But yeah, I don't know. Talk to maybe, you know, wait for it to get cheap. <laughs> wait for Christmas. <laughs> It's already not badly priced, really, for the content. Well, yeah, exactly. If you're a believer in the pound per hour ratio, it's <laughs> yeah. pretty good for that. But what isn't, really? It feels like a more a, a, a good value proposition when you put it next to Diablo, anyway. <laughs> Does it, though? Because Diablo is meant to be hella long. Yeah, but a lot of people play for it once and then don't play it again. Whereas a lot of the like you know a lot of people that I know like started on the harder difficulty levels and were like fuck this shit yeah but that's not really going to be any different for like Torchlight in theory maybe not depends on what they do for like because in like Torchlight 1 there was the endless dungeon and therefore yeah. you never had to stop playing it and did you ever toy with the mod stuff yeah so, oh, so how, how, to some extent so how does that work out you just how bad shit can you make it you just push it in there I got the achievement for getting like 10 mods at once oh really and I deliberately picked carefully to make sure it was like non ridiculous mods. The only main mods that I wanted was just like more story space. <laughs> so I could obsessively collect all the unique shit. And and all, all the gems. Yeah, and the gem. Well, I don't think I did use. use I don't think I used the extra story. I don't think I did actually use that. I installed it, and then I was like, oh, look, it spawns like 10 chests in the town. And I was like, yeah, but I can't trust that story space. <laughs> mm. It's like if I accidentally delete this mod, then what happens to all my shit? <laughs> Presumably the file that saves the like bit. Perhaps they like thought of that, and like there, there's a block that sort of saves in the or save file that's maybe like marked as belonging to that mod, so it doesn't get altered by other things. Maybe, but I couldn't risk it. You'd think they'd have thought about that. You think, but it's but it's modders. It's not even like real programmers. Well, no, but I get it. But if it's saving to your main save file, then presumably the main game has to provide some means for the mods to be able to save so they you know how the game the, the game itself could maybe be the one that handles how the mods save their or where their mods save their information relative to that save possibly I don't know so they could they probably came up with some systems so you could mix and match and turn shit off and on I can't remember what I did actually use the mods for in the end I still had I had a couple that I left on oh I had the I had the mods so that you could have the ferret pet in Torchlight 1 because they removed it like yeah. right at launch and so there was an easy mod to put that back in basically <laughs> they took it where did they take out the ferret they didn't have time to finish it or something uh. it was like very nearly done you have a ferret in Torchlight 2 yeah although in Torchlight 2 it's more realistically sized because oh. like in Torchlight 1 it was like fat it was like as big as the dog or the cat <laughs> Whereas in Torchlight 2 it's now tiny and like impossible to see in combat because <laughs> it's like there's a whole bunch of enemies standing in a circle there I guess my pet must be in there somewhere. <laughs> can you have a cat that's actually a cat? Yep. Now? You can have a cat or a jaguar. That's better. <laughs> or a cat cat. Yeah, exactly. Does it, does it make cat noises? Don't know, I haven't no. used it. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Fucking meow. <laughs> Fucking cheap, I was like. <laughs> yeah, a bird. It was, yeah, it was an eagle thing, wasn't it? With yeah. A pair of falcon type thing. Yeah. But you can have that in good ones as well, if you're a hunter. Yeah. Have an owl. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> the owls. <laughs> the owls. <laughs> the owls. <laughs> conveniently segues into Fez. Yeah, should we do that next? Still got other things to talk about. But... <laughs> yeah, what, do you, what do you think we should do here? Do, do you want to go spoilerific? Well, it's not so much spoilers, really, is it? It's like puzzles. Yeah. We don't need to say how we solved any of these puzzles. We can still make it fairly mysterious. Yeah, it's true. It's kind of it's a difficult thing because a bit of you kind of a bit of me kind of really wants to just sort of talk about the, the trials and what the solutions were when we looked them up and some plots. Some well, it was the things that were done that like really hard, really hard stuff. Well, I mean, the ridiculously hard stuff we did look up and then we're like, we were not actually going to get that because it was. Literally ridiculous. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel Rather like... than, like, the number system, where it was like, we nearly had it, but then we didn't, because it was... The actual solution we probably could have got. Well, it was because it was... 
It was because the number system... The redundancy thing for us. Yeah, the redundancy thing is like... If you've already done Here's the a, letter system... Yeah, this is, a, this is a hint that really doesn't ruin it. Uh, there's like, there are some numbers that can have multiple symbols. Yeah, it's because if you've already done the letter system, because mm. the, there's, like, each of the letter symbols is rotated four different ways, and that is four... Di- well, not necessarily four, or at least two mm. different ways, and that's different letters, you think that in the number system, each of these four different rotations of this symbol will be different numbers, but they aren't. Yeah. <laughs> or not necessarily. Not necessarily, yeah. Because you, your, your original theory was going up to, well, there's probably like 16. 16 different symbols, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, does one of these numbers mean 16? Have we accidentally stumbled upon a hexadecimal-based yeah, exactly. number system? That kind of stuff made sense. Base 16 numbers. And I very nearly... It's like, I knew the idea of that, of, like, the three equations to tell you the thing. Mm. And I had a great theory originally that turned out not to be <laughs> accurate, but then turned out that it was actually even... It was just because of the redundancy thing. I wasn't getting the right numbers. I was so disappointed that my music theory regarding the bell wasn't right or was but not quite not quite it's not and that wasn't my fault the actual note is it doesn't quite match it's one semitone out but why is like is that actually because of an error or something is like did, did they just did well, they get that wrong no I read or was that it intentionally not meant to be to do I don't music? think it was, it was just conveniently close I think and like I read somewhere online that the bell tones that they picked are supposed to mimic those used by the Tower of London right not yeah Tower of London Big Ben well it's not Big Big Ben's the one bell I was trying to think of the name of the, do the bells have in, in the, the tower's called like the Elizabeth Tower now isn't it because they it? renamed it for the Jubilee how did they <laughs> so the bells in the Elizabeth Tower <laughs> they're supposed to be modelled after like hey go dong 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 or something yeah except they, I'm not even sure that's right no it sounds like one of the one of the bells seems too far away from that yeah like too low but that didn't matter. But it was, it was, it was, it was like, I thought that that could have been a really awesome way of doing it. Well, you would have thought there might have been a musical thing in there somewhere. If they, well, if they'd have tied it all together, so it's like you could have figured... If, if you could figure it out like that... What, and you figure out the numbers from that? Yeah, or at least get one a couple of the numbers out of it. Yeah. yeah. That that seems like a missed trick. Maybe. They didn't miss very many other tricks. <laughs> no. In terms of various ways of working things out. But yeah... So, what, what did we end up looking up? Is, is, is well, we thing. ended up looking up the numbers because of the redundancy thing. And because I, the, the first time I looked things up, I looked for, like, more vague hints. And it was mm. it said, like, there's actually a pattern way that tells you what the numbers were. And there is a way where it's, like, these different, like, strokes in the number actually, like, add up to the number that it's showing based on previous numbers. Mm. But it's not, it's not obvious enough to to me and also because of the because we didn't know of the redundancy at that point it it was more obvious why they're redundant when you know that mm. it's like <laughs> you have to know both of these things and then it's like oh they make sense it's like there are it's also worth noting that there are more anti-cubes than you need yeah in the game apparently. there's a couple more that we apparently could. yeah because well one of the things we got stuck on like you know, there's, there's two anti cubes. There's only two anti cubes in the game that rely on the numbers. Yeah, there's the bell and I can't remember the other one. Oh, the um, the boiler room. Yeah. Um. So there's only two that, those two that rely on the number system, really. But you know, we we sort of messed around with the th- throne room things to the point where the actual solution was something we tried. And just couldn't get to work. Or maybe failed to do or exactly failed to, right. Uh, yeah, I failed to get it exactly right. It's, and I'm, sh- we were, I'm sure we tried the observatory thing in a way. Well, the observatory thing seemed really dumb, because it was like, they said there was an order, and there maybe wasn't an order. Because well, I typed in what we thought was, what when we looked it up, was like, I, I actually typed in what the what it supposed said. answer is. But it said, and it like, didn't work. And it's like, and then I just, And then you just started pushing buttons and it worked. And then it sort of worked. So it's like, well, we didn't quite figure out what that was then. Well, it did suggest on that thing we looked it up on that, like, that sequence didn't really have a start, so you should just put it in over yeah. and over until it works. But then that actually does mean it does have a start. Because yeah. we put in what it said and it didn't do anything. And then we put in, like, two more things, which would have been from the start of it again. Yeah, true, yeah. <laughs> 
So really, that was just bullshit. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, perhaps those two we probably should have got, really. Yeah, probably. But I don't really feel too bad about it, because they were so goddamn close. And then the ridiculous things that we were never going to get are right. actually four anti-cubes. So no, that didn't there's, there's some additional stuff. So, for instance, the book, Artifacts, don't worry about too much, because it's just backstory. Yeah, and, and it's um, also ludicrous to decode. It's pretty hardcore, yeah. <laughs> it's, um... Because we decoded all, like, a, well... A we knew what of, the letters were. Yeah, we decoded a couple of the pages, but that's not the whole picture, because it doesn't make any fucking sense like that. No. And we were trying to tie it to the big letters nearby to see if there was some kind of cipher or Caesar based on it, to see if it would shift the letters into something that makes sense, but that doesn't work. No. And it's like, the actual solution is harder. Yeah. It's, um... Yeah. It's a good one to ever figured that out. Flashing dots in the sky in the observatory seems pretty random. No one really seems to have a... There doesn't seem to be a clear answer to that one because some of them are really hardcore, like ARG-style hardcore. Well, it's... And other people, people, do, it's other just people like just say, well, it's like they indicate which way around they are. Like, <laughs> left, just left and right, which we tried, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure we did. Um, uh, what else was there? There's the the obelisk. Which is a bit funny as well. I can't even, I can't remember the solution to that one. No, I can't either. And the security question, naturally. Yeah. Which is... Kind of makes sense, given the universe, but you're not going to know that word, really. No. That's a, that's a hardcore. And, getting, and we're bad at riddles, so we wouldn't have got it anyway. <laughs> From that riddle. I don't know, we might have got it eventually, maybe, you know, through the anagram thing, but it's pretty hard. I mean, we didn't really have much of a clue. No. I was trying stuff involving cubes, see if I could think of some sort of, like, geometric thing, but there aren't many, like, shapes that have four letters. No. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the answer, just fuck it out, don't even try. Seriously. Got them biblical references. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But those didn't matter, so that was fine. Then we finished it. And then not actually really anything interesting happened. No, the 64 <laughs> bit, the 64 bit, the 64 cube ending isn't as mental as the 32 cube ending. No, it doesn't really evoke. Fuck! <laughs> you unlock Anaglyph 3D mate, though. <laughs> yeah, which we should probably try at some point. Get hold of some blue reds and. <laughs> somehow and see how that works out really badly probably yeah it must look bonkers it's an interesting extra to get yeah. for doing it but and apparently you also get a super jump which we never knew about and well I think I, I did no it one. I did it accidentally once yeah and then we were like how did you do that and we couldn't work it out no because this is something I can say now that we've done that but like the first time that that they were talking about Fez on the Bombcast, Jeff said, do they ever teach you how to fly? Oh, And Brad yeah. was like, no, they, they don't ever say it anywhere. And Jeff was like, oh yeah, once I got that, I could just skip all the jumping puzzles. <laughs> and I was like, when do we get this ability? <laughs> Wait, what? We could fly? <laughs> well, I think he was talking about the super jump. Mm. <laughs> but apparently he discovered that really early on somehow. Or, like, it may be in the first second playthrough rather than the second second playthrough maybe. when we accidentally discovered it. Yeah. I'm, I, wasn't, I wasn't trying... No. ...what it supposedly is. I must have just accidentally pressed it on the controller somehow. Yeah. Like, through the analogue stick or something, accidentally triggered it. Yeah. But, yeah. So, I sort of knew that there was meant to be this thing that was meant to, like, make you yeah, be able I, to I skip mean, all the jumping puzzles. I remember them talking about it, but it's... Uh, <laughs> It's, it's kind of weird, isn't it, that, that it isn't mentioned. Yeah, exactly. There's a few things about the world that had us confused as well, isn't it? Like, there's a few patches where we started seeing concentric rings of squares on the floor. Yeah, those weird bits in 3D. Hmm. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> Spoiler yeah, and they didn't know, they didn't, that didn't seem to have a purpose. They were just there, and it's, but it's just like anything in that game where something's just there yeah. is suspicious. Like it's either tied to the backstory in some way, or it's tied to a puzzle of sorts. But exactly. 
But goddamn, that game is awesome. <laughs> We've done with it at last. Yeah. It's a shame that it's over in a way. Because <laughs> it is so good. It's like, I just like everything about it. I like the style. I like the the sound design. I like that. The music is great. Yep. It's just... The fucking nuts of it in places like the, the like the meat the Game Boy themed or Meat Boy esque section and the music section and the glitch room yeah it's all quality and it's like and you can see why it took so goddamn long to make in places <laughs> hmm so that's not to say it isn't without its glitches in fact it has its healthy set of glitches really but they don't really detract no except for the save bug. Yeah. Fucking hell. Just patch the game as soon as you get it. Yep. Don't play it. And if you have already played it, you, you can't not patch it. it now, though, can you? Anyone who's buying it now, it will automatically no, yeah, be you'll, that you'll, get, you'll get it automatically, but anyone that's started a game and just don't patch it, it's not worth it. Or just do patch it immediately and then start over if you haven't start, got that far. Start over, yeah. You have to, because it broke us. Or, you know, go into it expecting to start over. Yeah. So Fez, yep. Do you reckon that that uh, Polytron will carry on as a thing, or do you reckon that Polytron was perhaps so tied into the essence of this game in a way? If you know what I mean, because like it's all over the place, isn't it? Like, well, it depends what Phil Fish wants to do. Yeah, because <laughs> he is the only person who has any say in that matter, basically. Yeah, he's the, he's the owner, I suppose. Phil Fish. It's a great name. Because <laughs> it has fish in it. Yeah. It's the only thing that matters. He's filling fish. <laughs> Phil Fish. So that was Fez. Uh, what else? Game of the Year. Not <laughs> Game of the Year. <laughs> um, hmm. I'm trying to remember what else there was apart from XCOM because we need to talk about that. Science Generations. Well, we made a video. I made videos and then we made a video. Yeah. I was testing streaming, which turned out to be quite bad. Don't record and play that game. Yeah, and then we tried to do a, le- a, not a, a non-streaming video, and it didn't like that either. No. <laughs> but it was made for a pretty funny video. Yeah, god damn it. As a... Yeah, I think it's like it was one of those... As I mentioned before, I had my theories about how that game times itself, and it must be based on CPU clocks Yeah, in some way. And if you have something that then interrupts with or messes with that, which video encoding probably does because it's kind of heavyweight, <laughs> yeah, the game doesn't like it very much. On certain levels, anyway. Well, it didn't, just the recording quality wasn't great. Well, that too. And, uh, yeah, and caused the game to crash some number of times. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. It's funny because the video sort of carried on for a bit. Like, well, the, the, it kept recording even when it looked like the entire system had locked up. Yeah, until we stopped the recording. It's annoying because I have we have more audio for those occasions than I could edit into the video. Yeah, because it doesn't. It no longer makes it's frames. Like, of yeah, video, it's no basically. longer a valid stream. So, um, the editing software basically just stopped allowing me to include it. It's, the video just stops. It's like, damn. So you don't get the full extent of some of the shit that happened. <laughs> you get some of the some of the shit that happened. Maybe I should make it like a re-edit at some point and like make those crash screens a bit longer and try and get the audio out somehow. Maybe. That's kind you of do funny. it with Audacity, I bet. You can just separate the audio and video stream. Possibly, yeah. Just pull them out. So yeah, that was that. Sonic Generations, we played yeah. some of that. Did we made a video. We also made a video of XCOM, so I guess yeah, there's also go, that. Go check that out on the YouTube channel. Check out The Salad Cast <laughs> on YouTube. And you'll find it. There's also there's a video of Shatter that we did last week as well that I haven't uploaded yet. Yep. So I'll put that up. The third and third video. <laughs> the third and... It will be the fourth player. <laughs> no, it won't, because we said third in both videos. Did we? I think we might have done. No. <laughs> we can count good, yo. <laughs> yep, we were really paying attention. But FTL doesn't count, so it's fine. Yeah. That was before it became video things. <laughs> that was just Game Bite, apparently. Yeah, which is a taken name. Are you going to re edit that video? No. <laughs> no, I didn't think you were. Of course not. 
I did put in the text like until we think of a better we talked about it at length like until we think of a better name or whatever yeah it's like video thing it's not really a name video thing so so was there anything else I played no we talked about XCOM no I guess not so XCOM it's good well we played it on a video it's good where I talked about it quite a lot it's good and uh go watch the video yeah the video is pretty good I guess as a sort of example um, yeah we play I haven't talked about it on the podcast before so we do need to go into it somewhat but uh, it's pretty good I'm trying to think what games it really reminds me of other than the original <laughs> XCOM yeah <laughs> well, so I lot- still haven't thought of because you know, I brought this up before when, we, when it was sort of announced and stuff like, like, I still remember back in the day like I think when I had my old 166 with a 3DFX card. I don't know, it probably wasn't a 166 with a 3DFX card, <laughs> but you know, a shitty <laughs> machine with 3DFX. Yeah. It probably was that machine, actually, thinking about it. The ter- the super, super, like my first PC or something that we eventually put a 3D card in. Right. Might have actually been that machine. But, yeah, back then or something, I do remember, like, there was some turn based strategy game that played sort of similarly like you controlled like a squad of marines well, it was probably like the original Syndicate wasn't it no it wasn't Syndicate or um it was another game that was very Syndicate similar Syndicate was, wasn't remember. really turn based was it it was more mm, more real time maybe Lemmings Paintball <laughs> yeah, yeah there you go <laughs> no, it wasn't that no it was, it was like rudimentary 3D kind of stuff you played it from an isometric perspective and, mm. Um, 3D chess <laughs> I remember going through this there was, I, I, it was only the demo version that I played I remember going through some sort of space station and there was like aliens behind crates and things and you had a bit of a shootout and right a bit like that Civ 4 mod oh right yeah that the lights where you only have four units but they move like actual you know people. yeah in a weird way a little bit like that well it's also quite people have been saying it's quite a lot like Valkyria Chronicles Sort of, yeah, I can see that. But that was less grid based, obviously. Yeah, it was more freeform, and you know the cover system was a bit more actual line of sight rather than yeah, like cover made a difference. Yeah, there was a generic cover stat, but it wasn't quite so. The you know the actual line of sight was just as important. Yeah, it was a bit more complicated. Yeah, cover meant you took less damage, even if it hit in Valkyria Chronicles as opposed to being a factor of how likely the, does the percentage <laughs> chance of hitting yeah yeah. it's more about the stats in XCOM well in a way sort of yeah. apart from not because the stats well, aren't surface anywhere really <laughs> yeah I know I mean but when you like it's like if you're in cover we, we talked about this on the video but it's like the actual physical line of sight that your character actually uses to shoot doesn't play into it at all it's just no the angles of the shot don't really make sense no well, yeah, that's not like they can easily go through things if they need to yeah <laughs> it's, a bit, it's just an animation it's a bit weird in places but which is the thing that our character chronicles did like dead on yeah I haven't seen a couple of times in XCOM where you even get shots that appear to hit the cow's misses oh really mm. or shots or I think the worst ones I've seen are, is I think it mainly happens when you're using suppression but I've had them quite a few times where someone will go to suppress an enemy apart from when they when they do their firing animation and then they do their continuing firing animation the bullets aren't actually going anywhere near the enemy because they're hitting something before they get near where the enemy is no oh, right yeah <laughs> or like I did have one time where I where the guy went start, went to suppress an enemy and just was shooting his teammate in the back of the head but it wasn't doing any damage because no. it's just a sequence yeah <laughs> Lol. So yeah, that does kind of happen. It's a slow <coughs> production, isn't it, really? Well, it could have been better. I mean, I think people. I think it would have looked better if they had tried to take light of slate into consideration, at least for animations, like more. Perhaps. I mean, yeah, the first XCOM game was pretty hardcore with that stuff. Yeah, it was like insanely calculated. Given its age, yeah, it's like it's they they were doing some crazy shit, really. It's like it is a sort of simplified version of the original game in a way. Well, that's the problem. One of its problems. Mm. 
It's like, especially... I'm not sure I mind that, really. Well, no. I mean, it's a good game. Stru- is, would you call it streamlined as opposed to simplified, or...? Sort of both. Sort of know. both. It is simpler than... Well, yeah. It's, it's like... It was something that I started to realise the longer I played it, but as I got deeper and deeper and further and further and, like, more time. It's like... It actually started to get less good the more I played it. Mm. I was like, at the start, I was like, fuck yeah, new XCOM and everything. And then as I played it, it was like, oh, yeah. And then it kind of, kind of bummed me out eventually. Because it was just like, the more you play it, the more you realise that you actually really don't have almost any options. Whereas like, this, like upgrading your squad with the ranks, a lot of those are no-brainers. Whereas, like, why would you give, not give your support guys free medkits? Because medkits are so goddamn... In the shorts of life, you only have one use med kits. <laughs> what was the alternative? Carry an extra Two grenade. smoke grenades. Oh, smoke grenades, yeah, probably less useful. Yeah. And there's a lot of, like, bonuses where it's like, it almost doesn't seem worth picking one over the other. So that, all, all that skill tree stuff doesn't seem like, you know, that doesn't seem like much of a choice. So not much customization there. And then, like, because there's only one slot for items, and because a lot of the things that go in, the, in that slot, like the med, crit, med kits and grenades, are one use, mm. there's almost no customization there either. Because <laughs> it's like, it's like, well, depending on what, depending on the four different classes of soldier, you almost always put the same thing in those same slots. Where it's like the support guy is almost always going to be carrying a med kit because he's the one with the triple med kit skill, and that fills up his one slot. And then yeah. he gets super high ranked, and then he gets two slots, so you can actually uh, put someone else in there, or another med kit, <laughs> have six med kits. <laughs> so yeah, it's like that that whole one slot customization system kind of really may, means no customization. Do you think they might play a DLC game with some of this? I really hope not, because that would really be shitty. <laughs> It would be really shitty of them to make that kind of shit in DLC. There needs to be, it needs to be like not DLC, it needs to be like, now we're going to unlock advanced mode for everyone now that you've done the proper way we wanted you to play this. Now we'll give you like, well the thing is there is actually like leftover file rem- remnants that like modders have found mm. where, where you can like change some any file numbers or whatever and it opens up basically as far as people can tell, you were meant to have it so that when you completed the game, you got basically a new game plus called okay. Second Wave, mm. where you could turn on like a bunch of specialized options where it was like, you know, enemies are hardier and they shoot better or like, like your funding goes down over time so you have to do it faster or the game is just longer overall. So all those like specialization, special options. I thought it had that. I seem to remember seeing reviews with that in. Well, is that not there? I don't think it is. It's uh, apparently people originally found it in the demo. Oh no, sorry, I know I'm getting confused with Carrier Command. <laughs> some, some of that UI looks kind of similar. Yeah, I guess it does. It, apparently, people found this option originally in the demo, but then it didn't make it into the into the final game either. Mm, maybe they thought it was too easy to fuck up the balance in a stupid way. Well, but because it's a new game plus thing, as far as people tell, it shouldn't matter. No, because like you not. have to play through it one time properly. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, that kind of sucked. And then the other thing that also, but you can, but make. It, does it work if it's enabled? For so... mm, well, some of the options apparently kind of work. Mm. <laughs> some of them don't do anything, and some of them sort of work, but not properly. Mm. So that could theoretically get put in at some point, I guess. But like another thing that kind of bummed me out about the customization is the fact that you soon realise that the weapon trees aren't. There's no actual customization. There's no. It's just a straight upgrade research tree. It's like, well, as soon as you research lasers, you're just going to use lasers, and then as soon as you research plasma, you're just going to use plasma. It's not like a trade off or anything. It's just like this does more damage. Mm. <laughs> so that's not really a customization option either. The only technical thing in the weaponry that is a customization is choosing whether your assault guys are going to use assault rifles or shotguns, which is like the only. Well, yeah. the only time you can put a different weapon in that slot and as our video seemed to show made our guy with the shotgun incredibly good at pistoling <laughs> coincidentally yeah um, and it turns out there is actually something that goes in the rocket launcher slot yeah. so you can actually put one other di- only one other different kind of rocket launcher in there which I guess made sense because it's a reference to the original game you unlock the the, the stupid blaster launcher from the original game that in the original game it's that gun where you can set waypoints for the bullets oh, right, and it'd yeah. be like ding, 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 ding. 
<laughs> fly around. <laughs> Whereas, like, that the super powerful alien weapon. But now you basically get that, except it's... It's like... It's like the rocket launcher, except you can target it anywhere, and the bullet just gets there <laughs> somehow. <laughs> just flies... It just, like, follows a random path through the environment, and then explodes. Patsy's magic bullet. Yeah, basically. So, yeah. That does appear in the game. <laughs> But then what maybe annoyed me most of all about the whole, the whole of this game and like even made, even worse than all this other stuff that had been making me gradually go on the game <laughs> it was like the worst thing is the last goddamn mission because they screw up their whole plan because basically I'm, spoilers spoilers to some extent but I'm not going to be very specific about it but um, you go into the last mission and the first thing you, real, you realise is that they the en- in this mission enemies can literally spawn. Oh really? Not in the way that they normally do, where you walk into the fog war and then they come out and then they do a sequence and they spread out. Yeah. They just literally spawn. Although it is nice enough to pan the camera to the place they're spawning, even if that place is in fog fog of war, to so at least know that the enemies have appeared. Yeah, there. Okay. <laughs> can you hear it? Well, it's sort of sort of a sequence, mm. so it's like it's kind of really obvious when it's happening, and the progression of the level is sort of tied to defeating these enemies as they spawn, basically. Mm. So that kind of sucks for a start, because they kind of ruin the whole idea of, like, gradually moving your forces forwards, because it's like, now you've hit this trigger in the level, and some random enemies are going to spawn. <laughs> okay. So that yeah, kind of sucks. So they, are they random spawns? From no, they are. Or is it, is it, those are very specific spawns? Yeah, it's very specific spawns. Okay. That's all tied to the story of the level. So you get through, you get over that first. Well, that happens in that style of game all the time. You could argue that happens in Advance Wars quite frequently, or in some of the more story missions. Well, you know, something happens halfway through, and then sort of. But it, was to, it was to Valkyria Chronicles' detriment in places because something would happen, and then, and then, but it would happen in a way that meant your forces were in. Well, terrible, yeah, I mean, terrible position. That's the, that's the problem with this whole thing mm. is that it does have, still happen. And then, of course, you play through it the second time, and you like, know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, and you can plan for it. I, and um, like one of the spawns happened, and like an enemy spawned literally inside one of my tanks. Hmm. <laughs> Although, luckily, that didn't fucking get it stuck or anything, <laughs> so I could just drive around and then shoot it again, hmm. which is a bit dumb. Because oh, oh, that's also another thing I can mention to do with things that are kind of bad about this game is like they definitely need to do at least one patch because the tanks are fucked. <laughs> uh, it's alright in that video. Yeah, yeah, it worked fine in that in that video, but there's all kinds of bugs with them. Like if you're if you're going to go through a doorway, mm. uh, you know how you can like run and do stuff and go into cover next to the doorway, and then you can hit a button to open the door silently oh, yeah, yeah. rather than bashing through it. Well, apparently, if you have a dude standing next to a doorway and you park a tank directly in front of the doorway and then you use the open door command, even if the tank then moves, it creates an invisible obstacle that stops you from walking through the doorway. (laughs) Oh. Oh, that's crap. So it it looks like the door is opened, but the actual thing... Well, it's not even the door. It's just, like, somehow that tank being there when that door opening thing happens fucks with the tank's hitbox or something and creates an invisible obstacle. (laughs) So that's kind of the first... It's probably not you know, something you know, the other way around, like the visual changes, but the actual model of the level hasn't. No, I don't think so. But it's just like, that's a fairly unlikely thing to happen, to be honest. Okay. That's a, like, a fairly obscure bug, but some of the other ones are less obscure and much more likely to fuck you up. Like, tanks can spawn with no gun, or they can spawn... Can you tell me about that one? They can spawn like look, looking like a rookie with no head... As with normal weaponry. <laughs> <laughs> or the worst one that I had was where sometimes for no apparent reason you just can't select your tanks at all to go on a mission. And if you go and look at them in the barracks list, they're just invisible and you can't do anything with them apart from dismantle them and build new ones. Huh, weird. And that really sucks because it uses all your resources. So that that carries over, does that one? Or? Yeah. Like it, it's something that happens. People have been theorizing that it has to do with like building multiple ones, at w- multiple tanks at once. Somehow bones up like their, you know, the numbering sequence, like the unit IDs or whatever. I guess. Okay. Like it somehow screws that up, and then they don't get assigned properly, or they get assigned to dead units or something. <laughs> but yeah, so that could easily bone you up, which is really annoying. So tanks are a bit dodgy, so they need to patch that. But uh, back to the last mission. <laughs> the second thing that annoyed me about it was when... This is less 
like a bad feature of the game and more just an annoying design design decision for the last for the for them being bastards on the last level. But you get to this room where it just spawns like two of the hardiest enemies in the game right next to each other, and they don't fucking move, so you can't like lure them into a better fighting position. Hmm. And they can basically see you for about a million miles away <laughs> and shoot you even if you're miles in fog of war. Crap. So you don't really have a choice just to just like rush them and hope that you don't take too much damage. <laughs> Which kind of sucks. And then the worst part about this whole mission is you get to the end and uh, there's a thing and you fight things <laughs> unspecifically in this room. And a lot of people have said like basically I just walked in and sliced the boss and then we were done. Hmm. And I can see how that could happen. But the trouble is like so that like people are saying oh it's too easy. But the trouble is, if you don't do that, it's probably too hard. Because <laughs> even on normal, I just got completely destroyed by that last room really easily. And I was like, what the shit? Difficulty spike. But then the worst thing about that is, like, up to this point, it's like, it's been kind of dumb and slightly annoying. But then, like, I got totally destroyed. And then it just pops up a box and says, restart mission. And I'm like, what? You just ruined the whole point of Iron Man Classic or Iron Man Anything by having a fucking restart option on the last mission. Retarded. Oh. <laughs> so, did that ha- would that happen like normally, or did it know that some something had messed up and that's why it gave you the option? No, or? it's just the last mission is like it locks you into it, where it's like point of no re- no return or whatever. Right. But why would they choose to do that in a game where it's meant to be about consequence and fucking up? Mm. <laughs> up to this point, if you fail the mission, you fail the mission. They just move on. But it's like in this one specific case, they decide to lock it down and it goes against everything else in the entire game. Mm. <laughs> it's completely dumb. And really annoying. And it's just like the mission, the mission, bo- the box that pops up that says restart, which is like, you failed and humanity is doomed and it's like restart. It's like, well, god damn it, can you think of a more, you know, subtle way to fail than to have me actually just restart? Yeah. And also... Or can you have something more dramatic happen? Like a well, or just, like, make you carry on, for Christ's sake. Because mm. the whole idea of this last bit is basically you get a psychic soldier, because you discover the psi powers, and then you have to train up a really good psychic soldier to be able to access this last mission thing, mm. basically. And it's like, well, it could just kick you out and make you have to go through that process again get another really high level psychic dude because they aren't very common mm. it's like basically two of the guys in my 30 odd dudes were psychic which kind of sucked because I wanted to use the psychic powers a bit more but yeah it kind of it's kind of dumb that they just put in a restart and also sort of doubling that annoyance is like when you hit restart mission you're stuck with whatever units you took into that mission so I can't even go and change my loadout now that I know what's coming like in that last room oh, I see. <laughs> so I'm stuck with whatever I've got yeah. I suppose you could earn mode it again from the start. Yeah, I if think I'm probably gonna. I, and I also might wait for patches. Oh, and people have been saying that you can... Uh, there is also another horrible bug at the end of the game where you complete the game, you fin- you kill the last thing and you finish it and then it plays the end sequence. But then it goes to credits for, a, for a, like a moment and then it plays the failure sequence and says that you failed <laughs> and doesn't give you the achievement for finishing the game. Oh shit! <laughs> oh, that's kind of bad. So yeah, I, I that after I read that as well as failing the last mission and then realizing that you have to restart it with whatever you had, I was like, maybe I'll just wait until they launch a patch. <laughs> then at least I can be sure that if I do get through this, I'll get the achievement at least, and then I can start over on classic or something with tanks that work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe that's it. Are they are they owned up to any of this stuff? Or? Not that I've seen. I haven't really seen any official. So not much feedback. Well, no. it's two K, isn't it? There's well, two K and Firaxis. Yeah. There's a big like there's a big forum thread where it's basically just a giant list of bugs that people have been maintaining and updating to say here are all the bugs that we'd quite like to be fixed in your first patch. Can you please get on with it? Mm. <laughs> That's kind of useful. Yeah. yeah. If it's like a proper collated list or they've set up a proper forum for that stuff, then that probably means they're ex- they, they, they will react. Yeah. But the trouble is it's for Axis and they 
like if you uh, if you think about from maybe you can think about Civ Five and how fucking long it took to patch the flow in that goddamn game. <laughs> that took a long time, and they did it in like multiple stages where it's like, okay, this patch is fixing this stuff, but it's still not done. We need, still need to work on the flow some more. Hope it doesn't take that long for it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I don't know what they're going to do about the console versions either. Presumably that it's not that bad. There'll be like little miniature patches like they do anyway. Like a few meg here over there. Maybe. But they do need to get it done before it takes too long. That's the main problem. Because especially some of those bugs could really fuck you up on the Xbox. I mean, the stuff that messes with your save file. Like stuff that makes you... Stuff that can ruin your Iron Man save because of something that happened that was a bug. Like when I had those aliens spawn out of nowhere. Oh, yeah. Like, that could have easily screwed up my squad if I hadn't have got lucky and sort of semi-realised what was going on. Mm. That could have totally boned up my save because I might have failed the mission and then that might have increased panic somewhere that I didn't want panic to go off and then they might have dropped out and it might have just snowballed or whatever. It's like, if a bug ruins your game because you're playing on Iron Man... That's why, like, I would always say to anyone who's planning on playing this, like... Iron Man is a great idea and it's theoretically the way you should play that game but don't actually play it on Iron Man while it's still got this many, as many critical bugs yeah. play it on Honesty Iron Man <laughs> yeah yeah because there's, there's nothing worse than that happening and then going well shit I just wasted a lot of time on, only to be killed by a glitch yeah it's super annoying it's totally the way you should play that game if only it wasn't buggy <laughs> So you just have to do it the honest way and save it manually, but only <laughs> save it manually when you between missions. So yeah, that's XCOM. It's pretty good, but bugs and annoying, annoying, stupid things, mm. and so not nice. quite as customizable as it should be. So not quite as good as it first appears. I, I, I was quite impressed. I got to admit, when when having having well, it's life. it's probably like it's it's tempting. Well, it's pretty good for like you know. To be honest, people who don't like, necessarily want the most ridiculously detailed strategy because <laughs> if it was as ridiculous as the original XCOM where it's like you had to equip every soldier at every you know like every random pocket they have on their body and yeah. like okay you need two flares and you need two grenades and you need like two extra clips of ammo and you have to reload <laughs> and all this kind of stuff and time units and all that it's like it's fine for people who maybe don't want that much ridiculous strategy but it just doesn't quite have enough strategy to not seem completely dumbed down to people who do like that much ridiculous strategy yeah and it did it, well it did look like as well that it would work pretty well on console yeah I really should try it with the, with a gamepad because I, I had some there's certain places where the camera control can get really kind of annoying mm. and I'm not sure whether that's just mouse it's like when you were trying to select like there's cert- I think it only happens on certain maps and like certain viewpoints with there's particularly one that I recognize one that I remember in a certain type of alien ship where if you're trying to select a position that's up on a up on a high ledge above a room mm. it's really difficult to select the point because because the isometric perspective you're trying to point at the square on the front of the ledge but it keeps selecting the squares below it in the room because they're it's seeing it through right. from that isometric perspective. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of hard to get the cursor to select the right place. And I think that might be better with the Xbox controller because it kind of snaps a bit more to the grid. Yeah, presumably, yeah, it will, it will do it like that rather than based on your cursor. Will, yeah. There'll be some big indicator to say, oh, you're looking at this part of the map. Yeah. So I think that... Like an Advance Wars cursor, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. That theoretically might work better, but I need to plug in the controller at some point and try it next time I find that map basically <laughs> yeah that's the thing I, I wonder that um, you know if a lot of the simplification or streamlining or whatever you want to call it is perhaps because there's a console thing here yeah they, maybe they want, they want to make it too hardcore they want to try and maybe this is where this where you know a potential sequel comes in if it goes well or good logs like, if they yeah if they open that like stuff that. if they open that stuff up you know like I guess they want to introduce a new generation of well, players yeah. to, to XCOM. And they kind of had to do it like this because they, <laughs> they didn't have that much of a market, I don't know. No, and, and bringing in something as hardcore as the original XCOM may have been a mistake. Yeah. Because it may have only attracted a, the hardcore clientele, I guess. But it's a, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm glad it exists. It's, yeah. it's, it's got a lot of style. It's pretty good. It's got... It's, I mean, I, I have a few beefs with the graphics a little bit, because it kind of looks a little bland in its look. But it's all coloured lighting and shit. <laughs> well, it's sort of. It's, it all comes across as a sort of... 
uh, it, uh, there's, it's almost too much fog. It's, I'm trying to think of the word I'm looking for. It's like it's almost too desaturated in places. It's like everything seems to fade to a certain shade of grey. Yeah, and I know what you mean. It's all sort of... It's like the contrast isn't there. You have to make all your soldiers wear pink out. (laughs) 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 Make them show up. (laughs) Yeah. It's like it works. It's got a style. But I think the actual sort of world look perhaps needs a bit of work. Well, to be honest, the bits that you saw when I was playing, it's like there was quite a lot of the same stuff. Mm. Like here's a forest. Yeah, true. And then the graveyard was obviously going to be quite (laughs) grey. There wasn't yeah. much to it, apart from grass and graves. It sort of it sort of made sense a bit more, I think, in the swampy forest because you know you expect a bit of mist, yeah, hanging about there. But perhaps made a bit a bit less sense. But when you're like, you know, there's like gas stations and stuff where they have like the gas station shop is all lit up or whatever, mm. and you can have police cars with flashing lights and fancy lighting on them, mm. all that kind of stuff, I guess. But yeah, that's that XCOM. I liked it. <laughs> Made me sort of wish a little bit that I had picked it up because it looked pretty good. Well, maybe you'll get it for Christmas. Yeah. Plus also dashing. Dashing. Your dashing weaves are dashing. <laughs> the Mr. Darcy. <laughs> I like that. Yes. Dashing! Oh, and I saw someone else complaining about that thing that I complained about where it's like, why is Overwatch and Fire and Take Cover all not on the same bundle all the time? Yeah, it's, that's kind of dumb. <laughs> Boo! It's a, it's a really strange UI decision. I wonder how that works on console. Well, I was thinking about it. And it Presumably must, there must be like some sort of... Like, yeah, it must just be like you push a button like to a weapon choose wheel where you want to do the action and then you left and right bumper to go through that list. Yeah, presumably. yeah a bit like a weapon wheel. Or... Yeah, or you left and right bumper to go through that list first, I guess. Yeah. Because you don't really choose the position for the action. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, that was another thing that slightly bugged me. Another thing that they could easily fix was, like, it doesn't always feel like it's using the same buttons for other stuff other than those ones where it's not using the same buttons. I mean, like, when you're using the mouse cursor to select which square you want to go to, I... I'm, the trouble is, I'm not sure whether I'm just remembering this wrong or whether it is like this, but I feel like sometimes it's left click to do an action and sometimes it's right click. Like, when you're moving, a, like, just a normal move, it's like mm-hmm. one button. But then I feel like, and I'm not sure, it might, I might just be totally crazy, but I feel like when you're doing, like, a flying move, when you're using a flying mo- unit, it feels like you have to use the other button for that. But I'm not sure whether I did. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I remember distinctly several times when I've been trying to do a flying move and I've like moved the customer position pushed a button and then nothing happened and it deselected it because I pushed the wrong one okay, yeah. <laughs> and I think the only reason that could be happening is if it was the other button normally but I wasn't paying attention enough to know Weirdly, yeah, I was sort of trying to remember how certain things do that like earlier in this cast in fact I was sort of just sort of pondering it in the back of my head like oh how do things do that but most of them heck, would like go for the uh the right-click action, left-click select model, don't they? And they don't really break from that rule. Well, you don't really use select as much in XCOM. No, it's true. You just tab through your units rather than directly clicking on them. Although that's a thing that <laughs> it was the same as like the original XCOM, because clicking directly on stuff was well risky. Because <laughs> you could very accidentally just sort of be like, I'm going to click on this unit. Whoops, I clicked on the square next to him, and then my other guy that I just had selected would run halfway across the map into the open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoops! <laughs> It was the most dangerous thing. And there was actually one of the later fan patches for the original XCOM made it so you could turn on a setting that made it double-click to move. <laughs> Which is like, oh, thank God. That's a bit, a bit easier. <laughs> like, a bit less... Uh, less screw upable. Yep. So there you go. Excellent. Woo. Woo. That's I'm, the cast, basically. Yeah, we're running out of time. I didn't really get a chance to talk about much. Well, do you, what, was there anything that you needed to talk about? Well, we covered Guild Wars. Trine, I suppose. Well, you didn't play that much. Of no, I've only played a couple of hours of it. I, we I, might I, play Trine on a video at some yeah. point. Yeah. I mean, well, we I might get, play Trine 2 on a video at some point. I can get away with mentioning you should play that game in 3D. Oh, yeah. If you can. That's your fancy it, thing. Yeah, it looks really good. Like, really good. It's properly good. There you go. <laughs> properly good. Probably good, really good 3D. <laughs> Play it in 3D. I bet Trine 2 looks so, ridiculous. So. Yeah, presumably. <laughs> so I'm quite impressed with the look of Trine 1, but but given the fanfare that Trine 2 seemed to have, but it's, it's like, that must 
been artistically even better. I feel like Cry 2 is like, from what I've seen of it, because I, I still haven't even played it, but it seems like they've always gone too far with like coloured lighting. <laughs> it's like everything is just lights everywhere. It does look kind of bright, doesn't it? Yeah. The blinding. The crazy blue. The blinding of the colour. It's so green. <laughs> I uh, played a bit more Saints Row as well. Yeah, if you're ever going to finish that. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose I was going to talk about like the uh, um, the sort of high tech section, the deckers, <laughs> yeah, and things like that. It's definitely the highlight of the game so far. It's pretty cool. Um, there are plenty of videos out there of that section. Yep. It's like it's it's like it's kind of annoying because it's I, I didn't know too much about it going in. It's like the, I'd seen reviews and stuff where it had referred to the you start that section as a toilet. Yeah. In cyberspace. So there's a cool... The, the look of it is really nice. There's a certain amount of... There's a, there's a cool, like, weird filter that they apply to the screen that kind of wobbles the lines right. of things and kind of messes with the colours in a sort of scan line way. Right. And it, which looks pretty neat. So the whole thing is kind of fuzzy. Yeah. Uh, in a sort of but yet yeah, still has the hard lines of like being in a computer and stuff. it's pretty cool it's a pretty neat effect plus also bosses that can induce lag yep that's awesome hilarious this quality and the music is great the boss fight for that section is attuned by dead mouse <laughs> which is awesome it's quality it goes a bit nuts at that point <laughs> nuts <laughs> It's like it's weird because it's like actually that, that, there's a section leading up to that bit as well where there's a fight in a in an old power station and basically the deck is like it's their, it's their home turf essentially and it's and it's basically like a um a, they're having a giant rave kind of so the more you destroy it the more giant blue lasers start coming out of places <laughs> and that's playing awesome electro music as well it's, it's a quite it's just a fun section of the game. Hmm. Which unfortunately leaves me that most of the stuff I've got left are to do with the luchadors, yeah. which sound infinitely less interesting. <laughs> Could you have done it in the other order? Or is that no, no. Order? The the way the story plot goes is that the luchadors would probably have to be last, right? Well, spoilers, but you know, spoilers. There's going to be some other thing after the end. Well, there kind of is because it's already sort of happening at the moment. There's like um, the military get involved, or this ridiculous military, this over the top, super high tech military with like lasers and shit and VTOLs and that kind of stuff called Stag, right? The the, the Stag Offensive or something. They're trying to just stop or organize crime and or syndicates and things. They're involved, and we haven't really seen the last of them yet. Because they kind of beat us in the last encounter, sort of. <laughs> sort of. It's kind of funny. It's kind of weird. I actually replayed a mission as well because I made a, a choice at the end of it that I didn't really like. Hmm. It's like it gave me a choice between, like, do you want Stag to help you out for a bit? Like, to take over part of the city? Right. Or do you want to save this annoying character that you can use as a homie <laughs> to, like, follow you around in combat and stuff? Right. And it's like, so I chose, like, oh, so what's this stag thing like? And basically it just boils down to the next time you open the map, it forces you to take over an area. And it warns you at that point, saying, um, this will 100% this area, meaning the activities and stuff will all be marked as done. All right. And things like that. And it's like, I don't really, not really sure I want that. I, I want to do these things. You know, as being a gamer, I want to play the game. It's like a, like a play, it's like a do this to win button. Right. And it's like, but the problem is, then it then sort of goes, are you sure you want to do this? And you click no, but then the map is still taken over by this mode. All right. This, and you can't get rid of it. You've already got it. Uh, so I replayed that section and said, well, I'll take the annoying guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. Uh, yeah. So I'm still playing that. I'm sure I played something else briefly. Probably a bit more dirt. Probably a bit more pinball. Yeah, I played, I played a bit more pinball. Probably a bit more bejeweled. I scored like a hundred more achievement points on the Williams collection. <laughs> um, yeah, I always play bejeweled, like the odd minute here and there on my iPhone. <laughs> but, uh, that's probably about it. Well, there. Harry Potter. Oh, yeah, we did a bit of Harry Potter. Okay. Working through year four of the Lego Harry Potter. We had, we, there were some sections of that that weren't so great that in year three but it's 
It's getting sometimes a little confused. Well, no, it's the start of year four we had trouble. There's a bit where we just couldn't work out what to do, and we had to look it up on YouTube, and even then it's kind of like, what? <laughs> you have to... How does... What, why? That doesn't make any sense. Right. But it's... Yes, yeah, so that's a bit dull. But i got to wrap this up. We've got like a minute left. Yeah. So, you nearly fell asleep. I very nearly did. I'm dr- I'm flagging badly. I was enough to keep listening, though. It's quarter 11. I know. I don't know what. It's, just, it's that lack of sleep again. It's catching up on me. Oh, it's quarter 12. That's why I Okay, in which case, that's fine. That's my normal sleep time. So, yeah. Exactly. I'm allowed. So, thank you for listening to episode 69, dude. We didn't play on 69. It's because you didn't say it at the start. No. So we didn't remember. It's episode 69, dude. Also, we don't normally say what episode number it is. So. No. <laughs> Bill and Ted, which means we missed the four-bit special. Or I think we might special. have mentioned that one. Afterwards. I mentioned it in the blurb. But Anyway, uh, join us, well, maybe next week, I guess, or whenever Dan is next about, or, you know, show, show his fucking face. Join us on YouTube <laughs> for videos. Yeah, there'll be some of those. So... By that logic, subscribe to the Facebook or the Twitter feed to get told when there's new stuff. In theory. Because we can't do it on the website. <laughs> so, no. Say bye. Bye. What? Punch it, punch it, punch it, punch it. <laughs>